play tournament and it's not the committee's fault it's just the way we do the tournament now we have these pods in the past you when you went west you played all your games out west and when you went east you played all your games in the east and in the south and whatever the regions were now we have this pod system. I was trying to explain this to my wife last night, yeah. and I got the most confused look with Where this. We're supposed to keep teams closer to the area, it's, but we've got Auburn and UAB in the east playing, playing in Spokane. In Spokane yeah. You know, Alabama being in the west playing in Spokane makes sense. And, you know, Bruce saying Greg Burns' name there, that was the question from someone there in the media. He's one of, I don't know how many committee members they are. He doesn't have the last voice of how this thing is designed or anything, but it is just a... It's a it's a broken system. If we're going to ship teams from Alabama all the way to Spokane, let's go back old school way then and just if you're the in the west, west is in the west. You're yeah. in the west. They were putting the west region out in the west. We're playing the east region in the east. Made the most sense. Now, it is I didn't even think about it yesterday when I looked at this Auburn draw. I had forgotten last year that Auburn as an 8 or a 9. They were the 9. Yeah, Iowa as a 9 eight, had yeah. gotten to Birmingham. So, um, you get a break. You don't get a break. Yeah, but, uh, give my us and take my wife away. asked me last night, she goes, so why are all these state teams going out west? And I was like, well, you know, the, the, the NCAA changed it a couple of years ago where you don't necessarily play the region you're in. And I start to explain it, and I, and I finally just told Jennifer, I was like, I really can't make any sense out of yeah. this. I, I don't know. I, I'm middle, I made explanation to you, and I cannot explain why two East teams, Auburn and UAB, are playing in Spokane. It really doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like they were punishing Auburn. Like Alabama, you could understand a little bit. Like, yeah, you know what? You're, we're going to keep you as the four seed, but you didn't play great down the stretch. You got bounced in your conference tournament. You get to keep the four seed, but you're going out west. Like with Auburn, it's like, yeah, you were a four seed. You also played well down the stretch and won your conference tournament. Still going out yeah, west. Yeah, but that it's is like by far the worst destination for these teams. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm just talking about geographically. And Auburn, we're going to give you the overall number one. In your- it just sucks for the fans because, as you said, these are the games that matter, right? <laughs> you want you these are the ones you want to go to. If, yeah. you, if you can go as a fan, um, and it was so awesome here in Birmingham last year, having Alabama so close and Auburn so close for you to be able to go to the games and and um, and not go out of pocket for it. Um, you just can't do that to Spokane. It's just hard to get there. Yeah, but if I was an Auburn fan, I'd save my money for Boston. And just, I would you too. know, you hope you're going to be favored. If you win this game against Yale, you're going to be favored against San Diego State or UAB. And, you know, you beat them, you're going to get an opportunity against probably the number one overall seed. Far easier getting to Boston than Spokane. Yeah, but I'm right about this. I mean, Alabama was at the Rose Bowl, but it's a lot easier to get to the Rose Bowl than it is Spokane, oh, right? Oh, absolutely. Spokane's yeah. multiple flights, right? Oh. From I, Birmingham? I, yeah. hotel. I, I don't know how many flights from Probably Birmingham. three connectors. Maybe there's a charter that will be announced today straight from Birmingham to Spokane for a couple of lucky fans who will make the trip out there. All right, that's the show today. Uh, bracket Challenge brought to you by our friends at MyBookie. Go there. Fill them out right now. NextRoundLive.com. NextRoundLive.com. It's the MyBookie Next Round Live Bracket Challenge right now. NextRoundLive.com. Until next time, God bless you and God bless America. Every day, someone is ridiculed and mocked for the clothing they chose to wear. It's a harsh reality we all must face. But you have the chance to change all of that with one visit to nextround.store. For just a few minutes of browsing, you will observe so many clothing options, from hats to hoodies to t-shirts. Please, for yourself or someone you love, go to nextround.store and embrace the warmth of true attire. Maybe you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, X, LinkedIn, or TikTok while well, we're changing the game yet again. Tyler's Telegrams has been developed exclusively for you. Hi, this is the lovable boy you know as Tyler the Intern. I'm a businessman now. I will come directly to your door and tell you every time a new piece of TNR content drops. For the low, low price of $740,000, you can be notified by me, one of the biggest stars of the next round, about that thing you missed. Sure, the rest of those social media services are free, but so is radio, and we all know how well that's trending. Tyler's Telegrams is currently operating exclusively in Bibb County. Other social media platforms are available everywhere. It's time to pull the trigger on the Next Round merch that you've been eyeing. We know there's a lot to choose from at nextround.store, so here's a few of our favorite picks. If you want to match LT and Brown, go with a TNR logo hoodie and throw in one of Dunaway's favorite hats. Any of them will do. The backroom's go-to is the classic logo t-shirt, while my personal favorite is the light blue TNR crew neck. All of these items can be found at nextround.store and are EG approved. Rest assured, your order will be packed with lots of love from us here at the next round. Head over to nextround.store to start filling up your cart. 
Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. All right, it's getaway day for the schools heading out to Spokane, maybe for some of you as well. Let us know in the chat room or on our social media platforms at Next Round Live, at Next Round Live, if any of you are making the journey to Spokane, Washington, across the country there. Um, Alabama, Auburn, UAB has got the, um, some of the longest journeys in this NCAA tournament through travel time. We'll get into that coming up a little bit later on. Uh, I will tell you, uh, brackets have not been finalized yet in my house, uh, but I've been doing a little research. Uh, we do this competition up here, but later on, would anybody want to take a guess? And we can do the chat room as well. Let's go around the back room. Biggest possible upset in the first sure. round. We'll sure. do that. I, uh, my bracket is in. Okay. I'm not changing it. It is absolutely in. So you have actually entered it. It's, it's, it's done. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Only I guess only Lunsford can look at it. I don't I don't know uh, if he's the only one that's got the password to. Uh, that's a yes. I, I did mine yesterday, ne- too. Nextroundlive.com, uh, the MyBookie bracket challenge right there, MyBookie.ag bracket challenge, nextroundlive.com. Rockstars is in. I'm in. I'm taking it from your response. You two don't have yours in I yet. just, I haven't even, this is the first time that I have not done a full run-through of a bracket yet. So I haven't, haven't even done it. Um, but I'm kind of like you. I think I'm just going to lock it in and be yep. done with it. I'm not yeah. even going to think about it again. I've got it locked in. I know who I've picked, and that's it for me. I was not in a good headspace to even think about it last night, so I put it off another night and uh, ended up was at the airport at 1130, picking my son up back from spring break, his destination, and uh, airport busy at 1130 in Birmingham, Alabama last night. I was really? surprised by that. Yeah. Yeah. Normally ghost town at that time of yeah, night. Yeah. And I was shocked that more flights were coming in. Some were landing. I thought we closed our airport at night. Uh, some were coming in at 12, 15, 12, 30 in the morning. Wow. According to the screen in my uh, cell phone waiting lot last and, uh, night. That could have been a delayed flight. I don't yeah. know if you know this about the airline industry right now, but you got a uh, better than average chance of getting a delayed flight. Do you do that thing where you wait in that parking lot? Yeah. Everybody just sits on their phone and then like when they, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, at, I'm at the gate or whatever. You don't like, park oh, and go into the uh, baggage claim? Um, I do not know. Interesting. So yeah, park in the parking deck and then pay yeah. and go out. No, I wait. I mean, I was, it's pretty cheap. I think if you're in there for less than an hour, you don't even pay. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was just waiting in that cell lot, and uh, you know, thank goodness for YouTube TV. I was just watching whatever I wanted to watch. I knocked yeah. out a, a Friends episode and, and a Law and Order. I like to get there early. I think I was in that lot before he left Atlanta. And, wow. uh, and <laughs> holy crap! That <laughs> I, I just like you know. Just I like to, I like to be ahead. Get there early, huh? Yeah, I don't want my son sitting there so, waiting. So apparently the flight was delayed if it got in that late. No, no, no. That was the way he is. All time? The difference between a son and a daughter. Oh boy. Um my son, I was he, he left his destination at seven AM, had two layovers. Ugh. And the last one was a three hour layover. Yuck. And he booked it all himself. And I was like, Why you did that? Why did you do that? And he's it was the cheapest price. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, Leighton Taylor wouldn't have gone that route. <laughs> I, I have got to tell you about there, the. There's nobody else in my yeah. family who would have yeah. done it like that. By, by the way, I got a proposal yesterday from from Leighton. She brought me a PowerPoint proposal. Interesting. Was yeah. it well presented? It was incredible. It yeah. was uh, so tattoo, creative. Or? Nope. It's oh. about moving downtown. Okay. Well, that's Into something. a loft? Uh, yeah, she. Uh, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's a. Uh, cool place yeah. that's something be... that has appealed to you so that's a little yeah. of your blood yeah, yeah yeah you yeah. like living downtown now of course i don't want to be hypocritical right but you don't want her to do it i i mean it, <laughs> it is a little bit different when you're talking about your 20 year old daughter you know of course it is um but she presented you know why it makes sense financially of course it's coming out of my pocket and uh why it's safe and she had i mean roommate put, or no roommate she put a lot into it she's got a roommate yeah, yeah. okay well that helps yeah, yeah. no so i mean she ain't going, she's in college yeah she ain't moving downtown by herself yeah no i think this is good for her but yeah. I, I was just really impressed that uh she put that together yeah i sign off i say yes you it's or it's already signed off by the way oh, i tell you go. what sign off I, I tell you what Way i to go late i signed the lease as a guarantor for my daughter for her apartment in her second year of college you know first year you got to live on campus mm-hmm. um we're in the wrong business Oh, I, I said, hey, listen, college I, apartments. I said this on uh, 2009 yeah. in Tuscaloosa. And then when my niece got accepted her 
to go to Auburn when she was at Pelham. And I don't uh-huh. know what year that would have been. She just graduated two years ago. Um, and she was told there's no more freshman housing. You'll have right. to find off-campus housing as an incoming freshman at Auburn. I was like, if I was rich, I would have bought real estate in 2009 in Tuscaloosa, probably eight. And then anytime recently in Auburn, still would in Auburn if I now, had all I, the money in the world. Lance, I am sure there's a relatively high student eviction rate. I'm sure you got to throw some people out, and that's not fun. And I'm sure there's a lot of damage repairs you have to do at the end of the semester. Um, well, I mean, I saw I saw where one of our local campuses they had a shootout between a student and a and a, and a security guard. Yeah, and, I'm like, my and, God, and, and when that's, that's a firefight with the yes. uh, the on campus yeah, security the, guard and a student, don't want to deal with that liability. That's for sure. But uh, but boy, I tell you what, they are they're not afraid to ask you for some money for those yeah, apartments. I, I have yeah. made some bad financial decisions, and I've invested in a lot of bad things over my years. But in '95, '96, I had an opportunity when I was booking to put some of my money into real estate in Tuscaloosa. Oh. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you you guys would be a uh, two-team yeah, right we, now. Yeah, we would not know Lance. No, nope, yeah. probably wouldn't have. Absolutely, absolutely. So hopefully your brackets are rolling. Uh, Forrester's probably a good time. Let's put up the bracket challenge graphic. My bookie brings you the wonderful bracket challenge for us this year. Uh, all the great uh, um, you know challenges you get with a bracket. All the prizes are all TV, right there, baby. powered by our friends at MyBookie. Go check it out, nextroundlive.com, at nextroundlive.com. Go check it out and um, enjoy the bracket challenge. And uh, more than anything you can win, just knowing that you are absolutely the best in this forum, in this group of people that uh, gather on this show on a daily basis. I think more people want the TV. I don't think so. I think just the joy of winning and being called absolutely the best. Um, and you brag about it all the time in the chat room mm-hmm. or on social media if you want. Just try to be the best, and that's what you get right now, nextroundlive.com for that. With that being said, Stephen Pearl up in the next segment, Clay Travis, and later Andy Kennedy. So we got two coaches off on their way to the NCAA tournament and Clay Travis on the show today. <laughs> All coming up, presented by our friends at Bud Light. We're at the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studio here, high atop the Blue Lake Center. And uh, contracts were a big story yesterday. And we'll jump into the, that right after I tell you about the University of Montevallo, great place for your son or daughter to go to school. I'm an alum from there. My daughter's about to graduate from there. 23 NCAA Division II fully funded scholarship sports, including a brand new wrestling program that got their first national champion wrestler this year. And uh, you can go check out Montevallo online right there, as you see on the screen, montevallo.edu, montevallo.edu. Schedule an in-person tour and find out why Montevallo is where you belong, montevallo.edu. It was contract day yesterday in Tuscaloosa. The Board of Trustees met some of these we knew about, some details a little bit more. I didn't really know Greg Byrne had agreed to a contract, but the athletic director, who probably was flirted with by Texas A&M, gets a new eight-year deal, paying him about $2 million a year. So good for Greg Byrne. Nate Oates signed his contract yesterday. He's got an $18 million buyout. We'll get into that. And we got details on Kalen DeBoer's contract. All of those are signed, locked in, and ready to roll now. You guys, which one do you want to start well, with? You want to go I, Nate? Yeah, you want to yeah. go Kalen or uh, No, no, because we already knew Kalen's number at $10 million, so none of that surprises me. The, I, the, the one I want to talk about, because I think it's a little more topical right now, is the $18 million buyout for Nate Oates. That's yeah, right. I do have because, a point on Kalen's contract when we okay, get to gonna, that. Gonna, that, get to that. I thought was really interesting. Yeah, so, so Nate Oates, because, and Greg Burns said this on this show, is, you know, it's important to note that not only did the University of Alabama make a commitment to Nate Oates, this is in the previous contract, right. when he had won the SEC and was the overall one seed. Not only did Alabama make a significant commitment to Nate Oates, he goes, I think it needs to be pointed out, Nate Oates made a significant commitment to Alabama with his buyout. And you don't see a whole lot of coaches do that. For in, I, I think most coaches' goal is highest salary versus lowest buyout possible. That's right. More on that with Kalen DeBoer. More on that with Kalen DeBoer. Highest salary or lowest buyout possible, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and Nate Oates has not done that. I mean, $18 million. And I know everybody's like, oh, schools have tons of money. Um, they're not paying that basketball. $18 million's a lot in basketball to try to make back. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, that's a big buyout. The only way, we were talking about our Calcutta last night and, you know, UConn going for the number it went for. Really, you've got to get to a Final Four to get that number back. Yeah. Um, if I'm paying $18 million on a buyout for a coach, 
I've got to almost be guaranteed of a national team. Yeah, I, I think people will be stunned if they realized how relatively low the amount schools will pay to buy a coach out to hire them. Not to buy a coach out to fire them. They pay massive amounts to do that. But when you go back and look historically, our agents have told us this. Our agents represent a lot of college football coaches. And they that's one thing they have told us is schools just are really hesitant to pay that big of a buyout to hire a coach. And I know you're like, oh, no, it happens all the time. It really doesn't. It yeah. really does not. Technically, the coach is on the, on the hook for the buyout. Like mm -hmm. Nate Oates would be on the hook for the buyout. But usually when they, they do get paid, they, it's the other school who agrees yeah. to pay the coach to buyout. But they don't pay $18 million, especially no, for a basketball no. coach. No, and, and that is an outlandish number. I, I mean, I – I know it's the largest right now in college basketball, yeah. but what has been the previous record for a buyout in college basketball? I don't know. I would imagine that could be it. I mean, that, that is it, yeah. I think, but well, I, mean, I, mean, I don't think it's if, close. If you're a Bama fan, you breathe extremely easy. There oh, yeah. Because, well, like, for the next few years. Yeah, it yeah, does go I mean, way down. It does. Yeah. It, this one did, too. I mean, that's yeah. one reason he's getting an extension, because these jobs came open about the time his current buyout dropped. And I think if you're an Alabama fan, you look at this, because one thing that has always worried you, I think, is the Michigan State job. And if you're an Alabama fan, Michigan State is not paying $18 million to hire NATO. If Tom Izzo yeah. says, hey, this is my last, my last lap, guys, you know, last, last lap for me, yeah. they ain't paying $18 million. And I think that job's NATO's. lost some luster, by uh, the way. I agree with Oh, I do too. I, I, I would almost take Michigan oh, over I Michigan Oh, I would take State. Michigan over Michigan State. Yeah, well, absolutely. They're not going to yeah. pay $18 million either. No. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about either. Anybody named yeah. Michigan ain't paying $18 million. Yeah. Detroit it, it, Pistons are not paying And then it goes down to what uh, after next year? Is it down to ten? Uh, is that what I read? Something like that, 18 to 10. Yeah. I can get details coming up. But it does start dropping. You know, by the time you get to 2027, it's down to a a, a manageable buyout. But by then, you hope Nate's done more good but things I, that he's rolled out well, another and, contract. And, and, you know, there was, you know, does Nate, does he like Tuscaloosa? I think this shows you he likes Tuscaloosa. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's what I'm saying, Jim. It's not necessarily about the money. It's about the fact that Nate does not fight this in his contract. That's that right. Nate that's Oates right. is like, yeah, put a big buyout in there. I'm not going, I just want to get paid I ain't going anywhere. And, and the length of this contract, by the way, is going to pay him five million, and by the end, seven point five million dollars a year, more money than Nick Saban made when he first started coaching that in is Tuscaloosa. Correct. And I, I do think that Nate Oates is going to do something that no other Alabama head coach has done in basketball, and I think he's going to get them to a Final Four one year. Yeah, I do. I I would if I would imagine it, they've said that about Rick Barnes several times and Matt Painter along uh -huh. the way. Mark, you know, Mark Few's got him there. I think he will too. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, I've got friends who think it's this team that will well, get them there only because the draw of, 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 of the draw. I mean, it wouldn't I, blow I, me away. You know, I back guess. to the Calcutta. I cannot believe how cheap Alabama went for, and I guess the lasting impression is you know how they're playing right now. Tell people what the Calcutta is. I don't think we're. Oh up yeah, on so, show. so Calcutta is. Yeah, I hosted this event last night. A bunch of people come out and they pay uh, for all the sixty-eight teams and. There's different ways you make your money. Yeah. But Alabama was one of those that, you know, if you get to the Final Four as a four seed, that pays out a lot. And there's just not a lot of belief in this Alabama team. But based on the draw, I think Alabama's got an opportunity to make some noise in this tournament. Do I have the balls to actually have them go into like the not. Elite Eight when we're – actually battling for uh, supremacy in the bracket challenge? I don't know. I hadn't yeah. gotten there yet. This is the kind of team that could be in Arizona or they could lose to College of Charleston. Do they call him College of Charleston still? Or I, I think or it's just Charleston now. Is it like, just Charleston? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, they were College of Charleston when they were Jack yeah. State's conference when Show, I was at school. Showing my age, they were calling yeah. them College of Charleston. Bobby Crimmins for a minute, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that you mentioned it, the, there was a guy, their legendary coach was a guy named John Cressy. Do you remember him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he was the coach when I was in school at Jack State, and he was he was fascinating to watch. That guy could flat coach. So Mississippi A&M doesn't start the tournament against Michigan State on Thursday? My, my dad for years. <laughs> my dad for years when I was a kid. Uh, who's Alabama play this weekend? Who's Auburn play this weekend? Uh, Mississippi Southern. My dad would call them Mississippi Southern. Mississippi Southern. Yeah. Instead of Southern so Miss. Instead of Southern Miss, yeah. yeah. And Mississippi State used to be Mississippi A&M, &M. I think, back way back in the day. Never in my lifetime. All right, so that's the Nate Oates contract. Greg Burns got one as well. By the way, if you're just keeping up with Oates, this is his fifth year going into the tournament again. Two Sweet 16s, one, two SEC regular seasons, two SEC tournaments. Pretty good resume third already. Third contract. Yeah, and this is his third contract. <laughs> uh, and get used to it if he keeps having yep. top 15 recruiting classes. He's got another great one coming in uh, next year. By the way, before we continue this, the portal opened yesterday in college. We basketball. brought that up with yeah. uh, Steven last week when yeah. he was on the show. Like, what are we doing in college yeah. basketball? 300, right at 300. Yeah. 292 names went in. 
from midnight till when I was listening to the pod uh, field of 68 podcast last night, sitting in that parking lot at 1135. Whenever they recorded that, yeah. 292 names went in yesterday. I saw somebody, it was one of the college basketball guys last night. It might have been Jeff Goodman. Lance was like, just shorten it from 45 to 30 days, and you're at least in the Elite Eight when it That's opens. Right. Yeah. Not the first week of the and, tournament. And so there is a Dalton Connect-like player that is going to be playing in this tournament that a lot of people don't know of, and he's got another year left next year, but he's playing for his dad right now. So Tucker DeVries is the kid at Drake. Oh, I, I thought you were about to say Yax, Andy Kennedy adopted Yax Lindenberg. <laughs> no, this kid's six seven and he basically does everything. But do you do you stay and play for your father? You've Ooh. already you're in the NCAA tournament hey, that's right now, tough Drake. One. Or I think this guy is really going to be uh, pursued. Do you take an opportunity elsewhere? That's I mean that's really tricky. Yeah, when you think it's about tough one, it. tough yeah. one. Or do you fire a middling coach? And hire the dad and the son. Well, I'd just make him the associate head coach. Yeah. Uh, I'd just make him the head coach. I probably don't like the coach who's I don't know having, if he's to, hit the, I having don't to hit the portal on day one right he's now. He's in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, all right. So now to the Kalen DeBoer contract right after LT tells us about our friends at Redmont Vodka. It is a local product, locally owned and operated, available in 22 states now. Ask for it by name if they don't have it. Tell them to get it. It is Redmont Vodka, uh, gluten-free, eight times distilled, uh, available at the Beverage Place Pink Package, ABC stores all over the place. Pick up a bottle this week of Redmont Vodka. I'll let you make your point, but just the, the nuts and bolts on Kalen DeBoer, uh, eight-year contract, $10.9 million per is the average of the contract. He'll start out at 10 Go to 11.75 million, fourth highest paid coach over that term of the contract currently in college football behind only Dabo, Kirby, and Lincoln Riley. Well, I just thought some of the incentives were, were fun. Like he gets $50,000 for National Coach of the Year. If you're National Coach of the Year, you've done something special. Right? I agree. You, you, check, you check those other boxes, yeah. though. You probably have the National Championship, which pays him what, $875,000? Yeah. yeah. Some of us call that almost a million. Uh, he, gets him, he gets a skybox, which now most head coaches at this level get a skybox I mean, for them and their family. Alabama's got a ton of them. I all, think Nick Saban had all one. All franchise quarterbacks work this in their deals yeah. in the you NFL. You said had one. That's interesting. No, I think Nick Saban. And probably still has. Yeah, one. I think yeah, he's yeah. probably. I, I mean, he had one it. when he was the head coach. I would imagine Nick Saban's got anything. He's got a freaking office in the stadium. The, uh, the other thing, on. which we know that most of these head coaches get their membership to North River, yeah. which is a great country club, by the way. But I thought it was interesting. We're going to pay for his country club, but it said excluding his food and drinks. Do you think that guy will ever? Pay for food and drinks <laughs> at North River. I hope not. That's what I kills you, by the way, when you're a club member because you go in and you're like, uh, oh, one. Not just using a random number here, everyone. Uh, put it on 135. At the end of the month, you get that billing. Like, the, the underhills. Yeah. So uh, the other thing in this, it was a stipend for a phone. Our university started to say, we don't want to use in a university phone. <laughs> like, we don't know what's going to go on, but we don't want anything to do with it. We're going to give you a couple hundred dollars. You get with T-Mobile and you figure it out. <laughs> Here's our phone. Yeah. And you get the other phone. Yeah, don't yeah. even plug this one in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those were interesting yeah. there. But, you know, on the buyout, um, his buyout is five million, five million, four million, three million, and then from twenty twenty seven to thirty one is zero. Now, now that's that's the buyout if he's being hired. Yeah, that's, that's not the buyout yeah. to fire him. Yeah, no, 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 he no gets, yeah. With, yeah. With, his contract is virtually guaranteed. That is right. Uh, yeah, that's without it. calls, ninety percent of the contract yeah. is guaranteed. But five million is a that's a minimal number. That oh, is nothing. You know, back to Oates in the eighteen million schools and basketball aren't going to pay that. You know, schools would pay $5 million. Yeah. So if Kalen DeBoer doesn't like it here, he can leave no problem. But the gamble is, here's the gamble on that, okay? So I'll, I'll play both sides of the street. For DeBoer, I'm going to have to renegotiate this. Jimmy Sexton's going to have to renegotiate this contract for me at some point. If I've got a massive buyout like Oates does, it's hard to leverage one job against another. Nick Saban did that with the Texas job, right? It's hard to leverage one job against another if it's a big, massive buyout. If you're on Alabama's side, you're like, yeah, but it's going to be hard for him to sell us he's taken any job other than Alabama. I mean, what other job is he going to sell us he's taken? Yeah. I mean, seriously, y'all give me a job that if it were open and DeBoer could go to Greg Byrne and say, hey, by the way, I got an offer from. Well, I think the, the only. There, there might be four. I, I think the reason this was worked out, obviously it benefits Kalen DeBoer a lot yeah. more. But I think Jimmy Sexton probably said, look, this is, this is a tough job. I mean, you yeah. are following the best to ever do this. This people say it might not be a cultural fit. We think it is. Obviously, you guys think it is. But if it isn't, 
Yeah. You know, but I'm just saying, if he gets fired instantly, he's going to walk away uh, somewhere close to seventy million, never to eighty again. million dollars, yeah. never work again. It's generational wealth. That's right. And, uh, for taking this gamble yeah. in his life. But but again, I mean, it's going to be hard for Kalen DeBoer to walk in Greg Burns' office and tell him he's taking any other job to try yeah. to leverage A against B or Jimmy Sexton to walk in. So if you're Alabama, you're like, yeah, we'll we'll give you a low buyout. It's probably never going to matter. I mean, I know we're going to give you new contracts, but we're also not going to get held over the barrel because. There might be two jobs you could convince us you would actually leave Alabama to take one of those two jobs. Yeah. So interested today in contracts. And um, my biggest takeaway is that the football coach at Alabama has a five million dollar buyout. The basketball coach at Alabama has an eighteen million dollar buyout. Yeah, I remember doing radio forever ago <laughs> when it was such a massive deal that Mark Godfrey was making more than, than Mike, Mike Shula. Shula. Yeah. yeah, and it was only like a hundred grand more, but I think Godfrey was over a million and Shula was yeah. not. But right now, Nate Oates is such a hot commodity for on on uh, other job list that the buyout's at $18 yeah, but, million. Dollars. But the other side of that is there are far more jobs you would leave Alabama basketball for well, that's my than point. you would leave Alabama yeah, football for. That's my point, right. yeah. But and, well, I'm and, just saying. And he's doing such a good job right, right. that those schools have interest in yeah. him. Yeah, but, you don't have to protect yourself near as much on the football yeah. coach. But you guys would give me, Alabama fans right now believe Nate Oates is more important to the program than Kalen DeBoer is. Oh, I don't know about that. Lance, I'm going to have to think on that. Well, yeah, the only reason too. I say that because what is the approval rating from from Nate Oates? I mean, right now with Alabama fans, pretty high. Pretty but high. DeBoer yeah. hasn't coached a game. But yeah. I'm just saying, DeBoer when he was hired, there were there was people clapping yeah. back. Stephen Pearl coming up. Hopefully, one day the next head coach to follow his dad at Auburn. We'll talk to Stephen about Auburn's trip uh, practice today. Flight out to Spokane, not an easy flight, but they charter it, so it's a direct flight. Uh, Stephen talks about what went on in Nashville. What's coming up ahead for the Tigers? Uh, coming up in the next segment, the show being brought to you by Legacy, LegacyCreditUnion.com. LegacyCreditUnion.com is the main web- website. You can learn about Engage, checking in all the financial things they have at Legacy. You can check that out, out online. But also, this program right here, it's called the Swap and Drop Program. And what this does for you, if you've got an auto loan, truck loan, boat loan, camper loan, motorcycle loan, anything, you can swap it from your current loan provider to Legacy and drop your interest rate and monthly payments. All you have to do, go to that website, swapanddrop.com, swapanddrop.com. Use the QR code if you're watching the show right now, swapanddrop.com if you're listening. Limited time offer, terms and conditions may apply. See Credit Union for details. Federally insured by the NCUA, there's only one Legacy, and the Swap and Drop program is back. Check it out online, swapanddrop.com, swapanddrop.com. Follow Dunaway on Twitter and Instagram at Jim Dunaway. Fire damage to your home or business is something you never want to consider. Ryan Brown here from the next round. But in the horrible event it happens, Dry Tech is here to help. They respond quickly and will reply to you within 20 minutes when you call 205-637-0143. They're working for you, the customer, not the insurance company. They've got five crews ready to go 24-7. Don't call the insurance company first. Call Dry Tech. Just remember this website, mydrytech.com. That is mydrytech.com. Did you know that colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in America and that it affects men and women equally? If you're older than 45, Rump Shaker encourages you to talk to your doctor about screening options that are available. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and beatable, but early detection is the key. For more information, please visit us. Go to rumpshakerinc.org. Also, 6th Annual Rump Shaker 5K coming up Saturday, March 23rd at Regents Field. You can register online, rumpshakerinc.org. Just because you've quit going to the gym, it doesn't mean that you have to quit gym altogether. Dunaway, that is. With our next round podcasts open 24-7, 365, you can access gym anytime you'd like. While you may have done away with your treadmill routine, our version of Dunaway is standing by ready to get you back to your absolute best. Find all that lovely Jimmy D-led content on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and in the podcast section of nextroundlive.com. This message is sponsored by Jimmy Crypto Inc. and Jimmy Crypto for President.
Tournament time is almost here, but any time is a great time to jump on with MyBookie.ag. When you sign up at MyBookie.ag, use code NEXTROUND for a special sign-on bonus. You can use that bonus right away. Win once with it. It is yours and yours forever. Not like some of the sites that make you win 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times before you keep the bonus. You win once at MyBookie.ag. It is yours forever. Basketball tournaments, NBA, the start of Major League Baseball, NASCAR, and golf. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. MyBookie.ag. Code NEXTROUND. Twin Peaks is the best in the game. Here, you're in the red zone for every college rivalry and divisional matchup all season long. I mean, where else are the scenic views as good as your view of the game? Only at Twin Peaks, the number one sports bar. You never know what we're up to here at the next round. The easiest way to stay in the know with our antics and adventures is to follow the next round across all social media platforms at Next Round Live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Whether it's Dunaway sleeping in the studio, Tim and Luntzberg breaking down the latest movie release, or Game Day Chronicles, we are here to keep you updated on the latest sports news while, of course, having just a little bit of fun. Follow at Nexeron Live across all platforms to join in. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Man, that's a bold question. But it's got that irresistible taste to back it up. One thing's for sure, when you've got an irresistible tasty match like Zero Sugar and Zero Calories, something sensational is bound to happen. It's too bad you can't taste it with your ears because this Coke Zero Sugar tastes amazing. Truthfully, it's hard to put into words, and that's my job. You'll have to take a taste for yourself. Coke Zero Sugar, best Coke ever? The only way to fly to Spokane, or the best way, you can get there many ways. The best way to do it is on a charter. Yeah. And be part of the team that has earned his way into the NCAA Are you dropping tournament. a hint with Steven? <laughs> yeah. He's got one seat left. Yeah. Steven yes. Pearl is the associate head coach of Auburn <laughs> Men's Basketball with us, the SEC Tournament <clears throat> Champs. We did talk to Steven uh, Sunday and congratulate him then, but we'll do it again now. Congrats, coach, on the championship. Um, I know there's a lot of debate on what conference tournaments mean to the NCAA tournament field, and I think that debate has been answered. But you cut down a net and you raised a trophy, and that's always important. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, our fourth uh, SEC championship since 2018, um, you know, that never gets old. Um, it's an unbelievable <laughs> accomplishment in such a in such a hard league. Um, you know, it's just it's really hard to win the regular season title. It's hard to win the conference tournament title. Uh, it, it, it's just, you know, it's a grind. Um, and, you know, it says a lot about, you know, the tra- trajectory of our program and, the kids that we have in our locker room and the staff, you know, to find a way to do it four times at Auburn uh, speaks tremendous volumes. And uh, we're obviously incredibly proud of our guys. Steven, I'm a degenerate. So I was watching the Ivy League championship on Sunday. I was watching Brown and Yale, but Yale has this kid, Danny Wolf, and I'm sure you've watched film on him. He's a seven footer. He does a lot of different things. They play really good yeah. defense, not the most athletic team, but when you really do a deep dive on this Yale team, what are you guys getting? Yeah, I mean, Danny Wolf is a seven foot guy that, like, like you probably saw, will bring the ball down in transition and like put the put it between his legs and like get to the rim. You're not seeing a lot of seven foot white guys doing that, you know, ever. <laughs> um, so, ever. obviously, in- incredibly impressive. Um, you know, their point guard Bez and Bang is a, you know, he's a two time All Defensive Player of the Year in their conference. Uh, you know, really, really quick, athletic point guard who you know gets them into their stuff. Um, you know, their starting five is, is really, really solid. You know, August Mahoney is one of the best three point shooters in the country at 46 percent. Um, number four, uh, Palukadas is a 38 percent three point shooter and hit some huge shots in that Brown game. And then Matt Noling, who was actually there when we played them uh, at Auburn two years ago, him and Mahoney were both there. You know, he's a six. He's like a he's like a Chris Moore playing power forward for him. So um, they have five really, really good players. Uh, they drop off a little bit when they go to their bench. Um, but as far as their starting five goes, you know, the, they're as competitive as, as anyone, you know, I would say they'd finish somewhere, you know, between eight and 10 in our league, honestly. that That's how good this team wow. is. And, you know, all their analytics kind of show that. They're top 80, you know, 85 in the country in a lot of these, you know, in, in Ken Palm and in the net and things like that. And that's higher than, you know, five or six teams in our league right now. So we're going to have our hands full offensively they're very solid they run really good stuff and like you said defensively they get after you you know they 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 really try and press up into the ball they frame off of all the ball off the bigs and um they chase everything and they're really physical 
They don't allow offensive rebounds. So they're 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 a good team. And obviously we're gonna have our hands full with our first round matchup. Um first off, let me correct myself as Taylor ran by our big glass window here, reminding me she's the one that wants on the shuttle <laughs> on, on the charter, not me. Not me. She wants the charter. Auburn not grad. Me. I think yeah, she, Auburn yeah, grad. Yeah. She wants on the charter, not yeah. me. She gets she gets priority for sure. A hundred percent. But Taylor and I had the opportunity to be in the postgame locker room up in Nashville three times. First of all, God bless you and all the coaches uh, keeping up with those personalities all season long. What a group of guys you got. How does that personality, uh, um, they don't seem to have any stress about their life. How can that help you uh, in the NCAA tournament? Because they seem to have such great chemistry, great sense of humor. It seems like that lets the stress Uh, be limited in the course maybe even a big games have you seen that in big games that they don't really get stressed out about stuff yeah I mean for the most part I would say it's accurate we as coaches it stresses us out that they don't get stressed out because you know (laughs) you want them to you know be a little bit more on edge a little bit but I think that's you know part of why we were able to go into the SEC tournament win three games in three days because you know while 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 we respect certain opponents those guys aren't really scared of anybody, um, which is a good thing. You know, I think that's a good thing. It's a healthy balance between the two. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a group full of personalities and a group full of guys that enjoy being around each other and, and just get excited to play. The biggest thing, you know, for our group is we got to continue to keep that chip on their shoulder because you know, going into the SEC tournament, you know, nobody was picking Auburn to win to win that tournament. They were picking, you know. They were picking Florida. They were picking Kentucky. They were picking Tennessee. They, they weren't picking Auburn. So, um, you know, we, we obviously fed that to our guys, and our guys use that as fuel and motivation. And, you know, even now there's teams or, you know, all these experts that are picking Yale to beat us in the first round and all these different things. So we just got to obviously use that uh, as motivation to fuel the fire because our guys have, have done a pretty good job of response that, you know, all year. And and it's helped us win a lot of games. One thing, Stephen Pearl is with us, the associate head basketball coach at Auburn on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. One of the other things that clearly motivated this team, because I heard your players say it after games, is this narrative that you guys were a different team away from Neville Arena. And obviously Bridgestone Arena sounded like Neville Arena a lot, but it, it was did. not. It's not Neville Arena. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how much of a driving force did you find that with your team? Yeah, I mean, that was that was the narrative all year. But, you know, if you look at, you know, our games away from home, you know, there's a there's a site called Torvik, a T rank analytics site that's similar to Ken Palm. But in neutral only games, we were number two in the country nationally, analytically away plus neutral. We were number four in the country nationally. And then away only we were 13th in the country nationally. So the whole narrative that we were only good in Neville is 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 you know it's a bunch of bs honestly like we we played really well away from home all year long um you know we lost some some quad one games on the road in in close games the only one that really got away from us was the florida game uh so our guys have done a good job obviously playing away from home but you know to speak on you know what bridgestone arena was it, it, that was neville north i mean i talked to coach golden after the game and i was like dude that <laughs> that was a home game and he was like, yeah, but, you know, you guys have earned that, you know, from, from you know, the, obviously the basketball you guys have been playing and, and the following that you've obviously uh, gotten over the years. But it, it was unbelievable the amount of fans that were in that building uh, that drove up from all different parts of the state. You know, we after the game, we're walking back to the hotel and countless people coming up to us and being like, we heard you guys on the radio. As soon as you said, get in your cars and bring your ass up to Nashville, that's what we did. And, uh, you know, it just shows that the Auburn family is, you know, as good a fan base as there is in the country. So our guys obviously responded well to that. But, you know, now we're going out to Spokane, Washington. And like you said, Jim, it's 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 hard to get out there and it's expensive. Like you, you, you you've probably looked at the, the plane tickets and the prices. You know, it's it's a, over a thousand dollars for a round trip to get out there. And then you got to obviously pay for your hotel. So we're not going to have that same luxury in, in our first round game. And if we're lucky enough to advance our second round game, and then if we're lucky to advance to the Sweet 16, we're going to be playing a UConn team that's going to be a home game for them, um, you know, come 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 that round. So, uh, obviously, it's it's a tough road. But at the end of the day, in the NCAA tournament, you got to play the best teams anyway. Um, so, you know, we just got to take it, you know, one game at a time, uh, one opponent at a time, and just focus on what's in front of us. We've always heard this is a guard tournament. You guys know what you get in the front court with, obviously – you're bigs down there, but Denver Jones, double digit six of his last seven games. Uh, he's playing better than we've seen him play all year long. 
Yeah, just playing with a ton of confidence right now. And, you know, to, to his credit, man, he – he stayed patient all year um, coming from uh, FIU where he was averaging over 20 plus points a game, shooting double digit shots every single game. You know, Denver did an unbelievable job of, of staying patient, you know, with his role. And all the while, you know, he would be guarding the best player on the other team pretty much every single night uh, and doing a great job at it. So uh, I'm really happy for Denver because, you know, everything that he's done has paid off to this point. Uh, he's been a big reason why we've been able to win six in a row. Uh, win an SEC championship and you know he just continues to knock down big shots and continue to show he's much more than just a three-point shooter you know he he can get downhill to the rim finish around the rim through contact he can get to his mid-range um, so he's he's such a complete player and uh, obviously for us to continue to be successful Denver's got to continue to play at a high level but our, our guards you know like you said our front court is, is, is really solid and I think the best part about our back court is you really don't know which one of them is going to kind of go off at any certain moment. It could be could be Denver. It could be Chad. You know, Chris Moore is playing the best basketball of his career right now. You know, I think he went like nine for nine or something in the SEC tournament and, and just gives us a tremendous boost off the bench. KD Johnson is going to KD Johnson. And then our point guards obviously have been really consistent and, and solid. And, you know, Trey Donaldson did an unbelievable job late in that game. Uh, Florida, when it was a one-point game, really giving us a boost hitting out a couple threes, getting us out in transition, and got us the spark to get that thing back up to 10 points. Uh, I literally have not unpacked from Nashville yet. You guys will be on a plane to Spokane, and I assume about 48 hours from when you landed from Nashville. Did uh, did the guys get a day off yesterday? Did you guys start putting in Yale game plan yesterday? Is that going to happen at the practice today? How's it been going uh, transitioning to game planning from Yale after the Florida win? Yeah, so we got home uh, Sunday night, you know, around six or seven, or I guess like seven or seven thirty, and then um, guys obviously hung out a little bit and celebrated as they should, and then they were off yesterday. We 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 got together for a little bit at two thirty, and um, we watched a little bit of good defense from the Florida game. They did a recovery lift with Coach D, um, stretched, got some shots up on their own. Um, and then, you know, obviously had class all day yesterday and today. And uh, we have practice today at 11. And then we will head to Montgomery at 12 or at 1 o'clock today and get on a plane to fly out to Spokane. So it's, you know, we'll put in a little bit of the Yale stuff today. I had the Yale scout. So I started working on that, obviously, on the, on the flight home from Nashville. So, um, you know, we'll put in some of their stuff today. Uh, give them just a taste of it just so they can see it. But then, obviously, a, a major part of the prep will start once we get out to Spokane. Um, and, you know, we, we, we could either fly out today or tomorrow, but we thought with it being, you know, obviously completely across the country, yeah. um, we're going to just get the travel out of the way today and do a majority of our prep once we get out there. If everything goes well, is the plan to come back to Auburn or do you go straight to Boston? We're going to go straight to Boston if, we, if we're able to win two games. So we're gone for, you know, a couple of weeks, which is, you know, kind of – kind of unheard of honestly um so we'll you know obviously friday hopefully win friday play sunday hopefully win sunday and then we'd play thursday uh in boston so we'd go straight from spokane to boston um and just get that travel out of the way as well yeah i was worried about that because i mean because there's a chance especially being in spokane you could get that late sunday game and i mean that yeah. might that might be monday morning travel even if if you play that late sunday game out there that's that's probably what it'll end up being because yeah. uh, there's like a noon there's like a noon Sunday game, but then the rest of the games I think are piled up in the afternoon or e early evening. Yep. So we'll definitely probably stay Sunday night, fly out Monday morning. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, let's hope that's the case. Hopefully, Coach. Yeah. yeah, no, no doubt. <laughs> yep. Congrats, and uh, hopefully we're doing this again uh, this time next week, talking about uh, the next rounds. No doubt, fellas. Appreciate you guys. All right, thank All right you, coach. Man. Thank you. Take care. That is Stephen Pearl, the associate head coach of Auburn men's basketball. Don't forget, you can pick all the games and uh, the My Bookie Bracket Challenge, MyBookie.ag, also presented by Champions World Famous Fried Chicken. Uh, you got prizes on the line there from MyBookie.ag. They're giving away a TV if you're first place. Second place, you get uh, store credit, next round dot store. Third place, our friends from Champions. Uh, we'll give you a $50 Champions gift card. MyBookie.ag bringing you the Next Round Bracket Challenge, nextroundlive.com. Now, a reminder, you can play all the games at MyBookie. Lance, have you noticed any significant line movement in the key games? Yeah, not, not, not really. Nothing's okay. jumped out, yeah. All right. Well, I got one. 
Oh, Jim's got a significant not, not line a, movement. Not a line movement, but oh. uh, New Mexico is one of my hot plays. Really? You oh, and Andrea? Hey, oh. they, it, again, last night the Calcutta, that was a popular team. Andrea Carter Mexico. has them in the Final Four. Yeah. You're going to jump J- over her? Just winning this. I'm just talking about winning the first game. Well, oh. yeah, I mean, they're, <laughs> they're, they're fancy. <laughs> you know, they're favored in that matchup as what, an 11 seed? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was going to see if I could find that line for yeah, you. New Mexico you. favored two over Clemson. Is yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, the game yeah. you're talking about. There. And I like Clemson. Right. Yeah, Clemson uh, actually came to Tuscaloosa and beat Alabama this year. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, as we just wrap up with uh, Coach Pearl there, Auburn 12.5 point favorite over Yale. Alabama at 9.5 over Charleston. Uh, San Diego State still a seven point favorite over UAB. And Kansas has ticked up just a little bit. Eight point favorite tells you a lot of money coming in on the uh, Hawks, right? Eight point favorite over the Sanford Bulldogs. Yeah, I, yeah I've heard a lot of people that have got Sanford to win Look this out. game outright. Well, you can play them all if you like Sanford. Money line right there for you, plus 240. MyBookie.ag, code next round. MyBookie.ag, code next round. They're bringing you to the bracket challenge. You can play all the games there. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. MyBookie.ag. A couple of programming notes for you. Not only do you have the bracket challenge going on but thursday we're going to be at odie's in the afternoon watching games the new odie's location in homewood correct yes right there on oxmoor road the corner of broadway and oxmoor okay so we'll be at the new odie's location on thursday 4 to 6 p.m and then we will be on friday at the walk-ons graystone location right off of 119 and 280 uh, two to four on Friday. So for the UAB game and then for the Auburn game, we'll be watching that at walk-ons on Friday. And that's the walk-ons on Highway uh, 119 and 280 Greystone. So come hang out with us if you're in the area. Odie's on Thursday to watch games. We'll be on the air four to six uh, with a specialty show, but you can watch the games with us before and after. And then at walk-ons on Friday, two to four, so come hang out with us, and we'll all enjoy a cold beverage, some great food, and uh, enjoy the March Madness going on there with our friends at Odie's. Tell me about Odie's a little bit, too. Yeah, Odie's Tavern, uh, the original location in Crestline. We're going to be out there tomorrow, me and Rocky. We do Odie's Team Trivia every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Enjoy some of the great food from Rodney Davis. He's been doing it for more than three decades. Great sandwiches like that Diablo sandwich. If you like a corn dog chili, they've got that. Uh, inside or outside on that great patio, ice cold beer buckets, Full of the Bud Light. Two locations now, the original in Crestline and now Edgewood. It's Odie Stabbard. I, I mean, we talked about it on the show yesterday. Absolutely the right call to go straight to Boston. I know that it, that's got its downside, too. You, uh, you guys know, I mean, sleeping in hotels wears on you a little bit. I mean, I like my own bed. My own bed is my own bed. But I think I had, a, I had a good I had a good bed in, in Nashville. I sleep man. better in hotels. Do you really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to throw the company that I'm on that mattress right now under the bus right now. But <laughs> I have uh, I've spent a lot of money on a mattress and, and it just doesn't work. And then when I go to a hotel, <laughs> it, it doesn't work. It just doesn't. <laughs> you, you know the 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 cheapest mattress we have in our house is the most comfortable. Is the one we got for. Uh, my daughter, when she uh, she's got one in her apartment that's now in a storage, and the one at, at the townhome, and it's the kind that that show up at the house, they're air oh, sealed yeah, and, and you let it, yeah. you let, and, they, uh, and I well, sat on it, was talking to her the other night, and I was like. This is amazing comfort. Yeah, I, I'm a dummy for what I paid for my mattress. Oh. And now that I sleep on the couch two or three nights a week, I, I choose the couch over the mattress. Interesting. So I've, I've, I've got to do something about it. Uh, that being said, my point was going to be that wears on you a little bit, I thought, maybe not for you guys, but sleeping in a hotel that much. I mean, that's like Steve had said. Basically, they're a two-week road trip right now. They're yep. leaving today. They'll sleep two nights in Spokane. And if all goes well, if all goes well, they're basically back two weeks from now from Boston. And Alabama's leaving today as well, and they're expected to, if they win two games, to go straight to Los Angeles. And by the way, if they win two games there, they're going straight to Phoenix. Won't even come home. So you've confirmed that, that Alabama's not coming home. Yes. Yeah, why would you, though? Well, all I'll say is, if I am not mistaken, uh, L.A. is a Thursday-Saturday. And you would not have to be back out to Phoenix until the next Thursday. Thursday, I think it is. Uh, yeah. You probably have media obligations a lot. On, yeah, but on I, that Thursday you do. Friday, Friday's Friday then, the open practice. And then Saturday's the game, Saturday's the Final the Four. Game, yeah. I mean, that's just – I mean, I'm not quite – I mean, that's fine. If they want to stay yeah. going for three weeks, stay going for three weeks. You, you, you want it. them to hit the books, don't you? Yeah, that's right. I need them to study. Yeah. <laughs> All I'm saying is that, you, you know – Yeah, by the way, Steven said, of course they had to go to class. Of course, yeah. Yeah. And I forgot. Yeah. I saw one of the contracts, whether it was DeBoer's or Oates, yeah. I think it was DeBoer's about graduation rates, and I'm like – 
and and that was a small bonus, like fifty thousand. Yeah. I would tell you this: uh, my son, who's not a college athlete, got home on Monday night from his spring break. He didn't go to class Monday. <laughs> Uh, I don't expect the yeah. Auburn players who won the SEC championship <laughs> on Sunday to have been in class yeah, yesterday my, either. If uh, my own son wasn't in class I on mean, Monday. I mean, look, if you ask an Auburn fan or any fan base what's more important, uh, this kid graduating or winning a national <laughs> championship, <laughs> we'll take it's a national uh, championship. I'll take that cut. I, you do so much of it online now, right? You, you don't even have to go to class. You can do it online. Well, you know, we were talking when we were in Alabama. One we of were the good talking, things from the pandemic. We, we were talking about, you know, I was asking Josh Maxson about some of these guys like – and especially a school like Alabama or Auburn causing uh, a little disruption with class if they actually went. And he was like, you know, we had that with Tua. Tua actually wanted to go to classes. Right. Oh. And, you know, if you're the starting quarterback and you are, you know, as, as highly visible as a guy like Tua, that, that can cause its own set of problems. Yeah. All right. We roll on here on the uh, next round as we continue here. Uh, show being brought to you by our friends at Hemp Hill. They bring you lanceslock.com every day here on the show. Tell us about Hemp Hill. Uh, 205-229-2090. That is the number you need to call. Whether you experience plumbing, heating, or cooling issues in your home or business, they are ready to serve you at Hemp Hill Services. Call 205-229-2090. Adam, Chad, Andrew, the guys there. Tell them the next round sent you. For more information, HempHillServices.com. Call the next round now at 205-734-0923. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Gutter Cap. Gutter Cap's that patented aluminum cover system that fits over most existing gutters to keep out debris and eliminate that gutter cleaning. It's back with a lifetime warranty, almost 20-year service record right here in Birmingham. Stay off that dangerous ladder forever. 45% off the retail price now if you call. GutterCapBirmingham.com. Call my good friend Chris Stewart now, 205-823-2212. Cap it, don't snap it, it's GutterCap. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about one of our favorite places for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That is Hamburger Heaven since 1982. Hamburger Heaven has been serving Birmingham's best hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, hand-spun milkshakes, and sandwiches made fresh to order. All of their ingredients are fresh and prepared daily. This includes their beef, always fresh, never frozen, hand patted each and every day. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, visit any of the four locations, Highway 280, Irondale, Gardendale, and Homewood. Visit nextroundlive.com today. It's free, unless you haven't paid your internet bill. So go ahead and pay that, and then it's free. Heck, you can pull out your phone and go to nextroundlive.com right now, where you'll find all the free content that you can stomach, unless you haven't paid your phone bill. Then you need to pay that, and then you can enjoy all the free content. Nextroundlive.com is so rewarding that it should be behind a paywall, like Lance's Lock. So in summary, play Lance's Lock. Then you'll have enough money to pay your bills and go to nextroundlive.com where you're always at your happiest for free. Did you know that colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in America and that it affects men and women equally? If you're older than 45, Rump Shaker encourages you to talk to your doctor about screening options that are available. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and beatable, but early detection is the key. For more information, please visit us. Go to rumpshakerinc.org. Also, 6th Annual Rump Shaker 5K coming up Saturday, March 23rd at Regents Field. You can register online, rumpshakerinc.org. Twin Peaks is the best in the game. Here, you're in the red zone for every college rivalry and divisional matchup all season long. On game day, you never have to decide which teams to watch, only what combination of bites, burgers, wings, and more to order. Plus, where else are your favorite draft beers always poured at a frozen 29 degrees? Only at Twin Peaks, the number one sports bar. Stick around after the sun sets. Twin Peaks is open really late. Wind down with bourbon and late night bites. Only at Twin Peaks. Every day, someone is ridiculed and mocked for the clothing they chose to wear. It's a harsh reality we all must face. But you have the chance to change all of that with one visit to nextround.store. For just a few minutes of browsing, you will observe so many clothing options, from hats to hoodies to t-shirts. Please, for yourself or someone you love, go to nextround.store and embrace the warmth of true attire. Guess who starts uh, spring practice today? Football. Michigan. Duke. <laughs> the Stallions. <laughs> Stallions have been practicing. Uh, I'd say old Skip Holtz around town. Every practice is spring practice for them. Yeah. 
Uh, they actually are based in Arlington uh, yeah, you, 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 for, for all of their spring drills in their first really? game. Yeah, yeah, you'll see Skip on game day. That's what okay. you'll see Skip. Hey, look, hey, you can't quite. Skip is the goat when it comes to this league. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I'm not going to I mean, I think he's got a better winning percentage than Saban. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's only lost three games, right? Um, Syracuse. Your Coca- <laughs> 0 for 3 so far. Anybody uh, else? Uh, your Coca-Cola spiced. Fact of the day. Uh-huh. You were raving about that yesterday. Oh, yeah. it's, it's my second one, back to back days. Yeah. And it's not even diet. I'm just I'm just absorbing the calories. It tastes uh-huh. so good. Coca-Cola Spice, get it from your local retailers. It's got some spiced flavor in the Coca-Cola Classic with a little hint of raspberry as well. I'm just imagining when it heats up, the ice cold Coca-Cola Spice on a golf course, the beach, the pool, whatever. Try it with your local retailer, Coca-Cola Spice. It is unbeatable. It's a new generation. Of sodas, I'll call this the new era okay. of sodas. Coca Cola Spice. Try it. See if you like it. Um, UAB started to, started to practice at nine twenty this morning. Year two on Trent Dilfer. The numbers don't make sense to me here, but UAB has eighty one returners and twenty newcomers. They got enough helmets. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of players. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My math is that's 101 people. Yeah. Well, so I guess we're counting walk-ons because you only can have 85 scholarships, yeah, right? Yeah. That's a, well, he's got a lot to choose from then. I mean, that's actually pretty good. I, I guess it's a you could paint this one of two ways. Uh, he didn't get worn out in the portal. That's right? the way I would look at it. Yeah, but then the other side of that, Lance, is how many guys did I have that the portal wanted? And uh, then that's the you know that's the downside yeah. of that. Of his Of his newcomers, I think – 13 are portal guys, seven are college signees mm-hmm. for the 20 newcomers, and then 81 returners. Uh, almost the entire starting offensive line is back, and some of their big portal pickups and their big signees out of high school are offensive linemen. And Jacob Zeno is back. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the big very, thing. He very played important. well. Yeah. Well, look, at the Agent development Z. of Zeno, uh, all of his experience under a guy like Trent Dilfer. And look, last year wasn't good. And it's kind of weird because what you would want in year one is Alex Golish, what he did at South Florida. And Dilfer was four and eight, but one of those four wins, they dominated South Florida. Yeah. Yep. And and they, they were close in some other games. So we'll see what year two is like, but they're out on the practice field today. A couple of other uh, commitments uh, yesterday and uh, Sunday. Tay Harris, one-time Georgia commit, four-star safety, picks Clemson over Auburn. Auburn was very close for him, but he picks Clemson. But he's already been committed to Georgia and decommitted one time, so who knows where he ends up. But right now it is Clemson. Four-star offensive lineman Tyler Miller picks LSU, Mississippi native, uh, Mississippi native, Picks LSU over the weekend over Ole Miss, Florida, and Mississippi State. And a three-star wide receiver picked Notre Dame back on Sunday. I didn't get to it yesterday. Yeah, I saw this. Jerome Bettis Jr. Jerome Bettis Jr. Picked Notre Dame over Texas A&M from Woodward Academy over outside of Atlanta. 32 years ago, his dad, Jerome Bettis, running, roaming the sidelines for the Fighting Irish. Yeah, and I, I remember going to watch Jerome on his final um, rookie game against the Bears as he tried to win the rushing title as a rookie for the Rams when they played in Anaheim. And Emmett Smith ended up winning it that day. But Jerome Bettis was a hell of a player. I just never knew that he could create a receiver with his body. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. Is I, I, yeah, they literally called the bus. Yeah, is absolutely. creating a, uh, a skilled player receiver. Do you guys remember that Sugar Bowl where he shredded Florida? Like, I don't know what the yards were. It had to be 200-plus. But that dude, and, and I saw this story about his kid, which is kind of cool, that he grew up obviously idolizing his father. He wore his number. He played running back, and then he wanted to create his own identity. So he switched numbers. He switched positions. And good for him. You don't want to play running back. Yeah, not a Notre Dame fan. I'd say Ricky Waters is the best Notre Dame running back of my lifetime. Oh, I would say Jerome Would you Bettis. go bust in front of him? Yep. Okay. Waters was good. Yeah. Um, so that's a little football news for you there. We'll talk to Clay Travis coming up at the top of the hour. Tell us about the Rump Shaker event, LT, and then I, we'll get back to the NCAA basketball tournament, which starts tonight, by the way. You get a couple of the uh, um, play-in games uh, or the opening round games, or I, as I like to call it, True TV Tuesday. You get to find out where True TV is again on your uh, provider. A 540, Wagner and Howard, winner against North Carolina. And then after that, Colorado State and Virginia, the winner gets Texas. That update brought to you by the Rump Shaker. Yeah, and we've got both of those plays at Lance's lock. And I do want to bring up something in 11 of 12 tournaments since we've had the first four. 
at least one team has advanced to the second round. Oh. So these games might seem meaningless. We've had two Final Fours in 21. You had UCLA in 2011, Shaka Smart, still living on that Final Four run with VCU. Yes. But these, these games do actually matter because some of these participants are able to advance. Colorado State, Virginia winner. Good chance to oh, advance yeah. past Texas, in my opinion. I, I, I would agree with you. Um, the Rump Shaker, it is coming up this weekend. Hard to believe that March is already almost done. Uh, join us for the 16th annual Rump Shaker 5K on Saturday, March 23rd at Regions Field. To get registered for more information, rumpshakerinc.org. Did you realize that colon cancer, second leading cause of cancer deaths in America, it affects men and women equally. For 45 or older, Rump Shaker encourages you to talk to your doctor about screening options that are available. Colon cancer is preventable, it's treatable, it's beatable. Early detection is the key. Rumpshakerinc.org. You guys know this already, but uh, if you... If if you don't, I'll just update you if you're paying attention. Stetson and Grambling making their first tournament appearance. Stetson, I think, in Daytona Beach, Florida. Stetson, Mad uh, Hatters. They're at least in Central Florida. In, I thought they were Orlando. No, it's no. in um, oh, yeah, it's the, in, the land. The land. Yeah, they used to be in the Conference of Jack State back yeah, in the day. So yeah. it's in between Daytona yeah, and, just, uh, yeah. and yeah, our, uh, our Orlando. Our buddy, uh, Roni, his ex-wife, that's Callie, right. she is married to the strength and conditioning yeah, coach. There. That's right. Yeah. But Grambling's first trip, all the years in the SWAC, I thought Grambling, which oh. is, to me, the, when I think of the SWAC, I always think Grambling first in football because of Eddie Robinson. I thought the basketball program would have been in the NCAA tournament before, but according to what I read, first trip for both of those teams, Mad Hatters for Stetson, if you're doing the nickname game. Um, Will Wade, for those that forget, is at McNeese State. I mean, the guy can obviously coach. Right? Thirty and three. Yeah. We know this year. Thirty they were and three. Pathetic last yep. year. It is one of the greatest one season turnarounds you've seen in the history of college basketball. I know it won't get that kind of pub because it's McNeese, but that is a team that that dominated their conference this yeah. year. They're dangerous. They're yeah. athletic. It rebuilt this team through the portal, and his players love him. You know why? Uh, I was reading the Athletic today. They get paid well. Big in depth, other than the NIL, which, by the way, everything he got charged oh, yeah. with it's all legal at now. LSU yep. is legal now. He encourages them as they came, as he they come to McNeese. All the players say uh, after this season, he's encouraging us. If we get big time offers from bigger programs, he's telling us, you've got to go get the bag, man. Go get the bag. Well, you know why? Yeah. Because he's going to get the bag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if McNeese wins a game or two in this tournament, which they are capable of doing. Yeah, he'll get I, the bag. I wouldn't be yep. surprised if he's out this year. Um, longest consecutive NCAA tournament appearances, the streak. Who's number one? I would go Kansas. This Kansas gonna, this, was going to be my first guess. This is going to tell you how we pay attention or don't pay attention to NCAA violations on this show. Kansas is my answer. Yeah, that would be just, my answer. I can't remember like Barry, the missing Just one. like Barry Bonds is the home run kid. Yeah, right? Kansas has been oh, to the oh, – Don't tell me yeah. you're going to recognize is the a, answer. a vacated one. Yeah. No, Kansas oh, – I'm saying Barry Bonds is my well, home I know, run Well, I know, I know, but yeah. I mean – But Kansas has gone to 34 NCAA right. tournaments, but technically they're not the lead. But for me, yeah, that's what Kansas, I'm saying. Yeah. Kansas okay. is the lead. Okay, good. But by NCAA standards, they had 2018 vacated, so yeah. their streak just started in 2019. But we were all right. Yeah, we all but saw Kansas it, yeah. is it. That's right. Who's next? Oh, normally I would go Duke or North Carolina here. Both of those are incorrect. Yeah, I, I know. Because, think... So I said normally, but I remember North Carolina missing. Duke missed not too long ago. Oh, I am going to go. God, this is tough. <sighs> Michigan State. Michigan State, 26 okay. years straight is number two. All right, number three. Boy, they were squarely on the bubble. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna stop at four. Okay, Who's so number, number three? three would be Gonzaga. Caleb's got it in the chat room. Gonzaga uh, yeah. at twenty five straight. Okay, and number four drops down from you know, thirty four. Uh huh. Twenty six, twenty five. Number four is nine. Nine. That's a gap. Nine is all. Is that a gap? Yeah, that's, that's a, a gap. That's a gap. A gap. Yeah. So thirty four Kansas. If you don't pay attention to the NCAA violations. 26 Michigan State, 25 Gonzaga. And then I would go Duke. Gap, nine, not Duke. And not North Carolina. And not North Carolina. Um, poof, That's a tough one then if it's not Duke or Carolina. Nine in a row? I will tell you they have not seen the Elite Eight nine straight years. Sometimes oh, they don't even see. Purdue? Some, Purdue. Yeah. Sometimes they don't even see the second round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Purdue at nine. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. It's that big of a gap. It um, is. 
But I don't know. I mean, Duke and North Carolina are the obvious ones that you would think would be able to fill that gap. But, but North they've Carolina obviously missed. missed last year. I know, I know. They've yeah, obviously yeah. missed. Uh, I forget what last hey, time they missed. What a weird yeah. – I mean, what a weird three years. You play for a national championship in year one. You completely miss the tournament. You lose one of your best players to the portal this year, and you're a one seed. Yeah. Uh, who was the portal guy to Arizona? Caleb Love. Caleb Love. And you notice that the one, two in that region. Oh, yeah. If, oh, yeah. They, if they make yeah. it to the Elite Eight, it could be Caleb Love versus – I mean, the, d- the, the Kayla Love remake yeah. there at, 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 uh, at North Carolina. They say they don't do storylines. Don't tell me that. Yeah. Texas A&M, Nebraska, that storyline. Purdue, Tennessee being in the same bracket. Auburn, UAB playing in the second round if they both win. Yeah. They do storylines. By the way, I forgot Auburn. We were wishing good luck to Steven. Hopefully, hopefully he stays alive and gets to make that trip to Boston. I also forgot they play well, UAB in the second I'm round. I'm going to do the same thing to yeah. Andy. I yeah. wish them both great luck. Great luck. Yeah. Great luck, guys. Well, as long as we get that game. Yeah. Then and both win know, the first round. There's no losing then friends for us. of the show. We've yeah. got somebody the second weekend. Yeah, and then we'll go full st- Trev Alberts. Good luck to both sides. <laughs> Hope it's a good game. Doctor B brings you LT's hair today, uncovered and in person. Yeah. Um. Again, three times a week, thirty minutes each time. That is the only treatment I'm doing right now from Doctor B. It's the non-invasive thirty minutes on the couch three times. My hair has more than doubled in thickness. When we started this platform, hair started to thin out. I noticed it on camera. Asked around. Doctor Beckenstein was the name everyone recommended. Went to see him, and here's where we are right now. 205-319-0316. Tell him the next round sent you for more than 20 years. Women and men have turned to Dr. Beckenstein for a range of cosmetic and reconstructive procedures. He will use that experience as advanced training and genetic testing to help his patients fully understand the procedures they are considering. Call Dr. B today, 205-319-0316 or t3hair.net. Follow John Lunsford on Twitter at jlunts. You could win a Cadillac CT5 or your share of $25,000 in free play and cash at Birmingham Racecourse Casino. The more you visit, the more chances you have to win. Play the latest, most exciting games around with fun bonuses and big jackpots. You can be a winner, too. Come win your share during the Cadillac CT5 and $25,000 giveaway at Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Drawings April 5th and 6th. Located off I-459, exit 31, Derby Parkway. Must be 21 or older, must be present to win. When on YouTube, you constantly hear requests to please like and subscribe. Well, here at Disrupt Media, we aren't going to play that game. Those demands are frankly outdated. So we just want you to hit like or subscribe. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure novel. Pick a path, hit like, or hit subscribe. It's your call. We don't care which. Just pick one. Or go to Roll Tide Pods and do it. Or War Damn Pods. Or the Disrupt Media YouTube channel. Or the Meltdown. Just make a decision and stick with it. Like or subscribe, the choice is yours. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus Prime Beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop. Rare quality, well-done service. Storm season is here. Make sure you have a plan of action in place right now. Greg from Pell City and Storm Restoration Roofing should be your first call when storms hit. Insurance companies love working with Storm Restoration Roofing because of Greg Nelson's name and reputation in the industry. When storms hit, call Greg Nelson. He's local. 205-542-3531. He's the home of the free no-cost roof inspection. Greg from Pell City on Facebook. 205 542 3531, it's Storm Restoration Roofing. Hey, let me tell you about our friends at Urology Centers of Alabama. Compassionate and comprehensive urological care with 35 physicians, 17 locations across Alabama. Their patient-centered approach to all of your urological needs. Remember, they've got that new men's health center. It is beautiful, helping men with a wide range of sensitive male issues in a comfortable environment. You can always go online, visit urologycentersalabama.com, schedule an appointment with one of their many urologists today. Hey, there's nothing worse than waking up to a plumbing problem. Don't get caught in a flooded house. Call the guys at Hemphill Services. Adam, Chad, and the team at Hemphill are the only ones I trust to fix it and fix it right the first time. Hemphill Services does it right and always at a fair price. For all of your plumbing, cooling, and heating needs, trust the name that Birmingham has trusted since 1954, that is Hemp Hill Services. Call now, 205-229-2090. That's 205-229-2090. 
Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. Don't forget, time running out for you to go to nextroundlive.com, nextroundlive.com, or a link in the chat room if you're watching us on video for our My Bookie Bracket Challenge presented by our friends at Champies on Highway 119 in Alabaster. Um, Next Round Live Bracket Challenge powered by My Bookie Champies Chicken with some of the prizes, and they'll be bringing us great food on the opening round on Thursday. We're at Odie's on Thursday, 4 to 6 as well. We're at Walk-On's on Friday, two to four to watch the opening round games and uh, this part of the show being brought to you by urology centers of alabama urology centers alabama.com to schedule an appointment treating all your urological needs from prostate health to kidney stones and everything in between guys it's so important as you get older to stay on top of your health and that's what uca is for urology centers alabama.com to schedule an appointment 35 urologists 16 locations around alabama all right clay travis the founder of outkick you can also see him on fox he is with us on the johnston rv center.com hotline what is up clay how are you today i'm great how are you doing fantastic thanks a lot let's start with your vols um i mean as soon as they get to the postseason it's a different team this is what scares you about a rick barnes coach team i know it's just the SEC tournament, not the NCAA tournament, but this has been a problem for him at Tennessee. Yeah, it has. Uh, look, he's been to two Sweet 16s um, and lost a couple of uh, really tough games um, in um, in the Sweet 16. Um, you know, FAU uh, last year, I think you can point and say, well, uh, Kai Ziegler tore his ACL. Tennessee didn't really have a point guard. They beat Duke in the round of 32. Tennessee was a five seed. I think last year you can say they exceeded expectations. Um, now, the way the season ended with the loss to FAU was disappointing, but they were underdogs against Duke, uh, and they won and beat Duke even without an actual point guard, which was pretty impressive. Um, you know, they lost a brutal, people who remember, um, just a brutal overtime Sweet 16 game against Purdue. Uh, I think it was in 2019 was the year. Uh, they fouled with two seconds left on a three-pointer, um, up two. Uh, guy hit two out of three. They lost in overtime. Um, God, that was just a devastating game. They would have otherwise been in the Elite Eight. Um, but uh, the one that I think really was a disappointing season was they lost to Michigan in the round of 32 uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, lost me my bracket clearly challenge, Clay. I had you guys national runner-up that year. Yeah, clearly were the better team, won the SEC basketball tournament that year, were playing at a high level. Uh, that was one that I think a lot of people would point to. And then they had, I think I've talked about it with you guys before, um, obviously I remember all these games well, the uh, Loyola of Chicago run to the Final Four. Uh, you should just pull up and watch the shot that Loyola of Chicago hit. Um, you know, I think it hit like the rim three times, the backboard twice. I mean, it's one of the craziest winning <laughs> shots uh, in NCAA tournament history. Um, so look, uh, you know, Tennessee was the number five overall team in the, uh, in the S curve. They barely missed, uh, being the number one seed. Uh, if they had beaten Mississippi state or Kentucky, they probably would have been a one seed. But I think if you look at that North Carolina bracket, it's the toughest, uh, I, I think. And look, Tennessee will play, uh, St. Peter's, who beat Kentucky, so you know you got to keep your head on a swivel there. Uh, but uh, um, I then they get either uh, you know they get the play-in game tonight between who Colorado State, UVA, and the winner of that game will play Texas, if I'm not mistaken. And Tennessee should be a decent favorite. So um, I, you know, if you told me before the season started Tennessee would be slotted to play Creighton in the Sweet 16. Uh, with a chance to go to the Elite Eight, uh, I think you'd have to take that and not um, not think that you got a brutal schedule. And I don't think they've already played Purdue once. Uh, I think Tennessee matches up with Purdue fairly well um, in the event that the brackets held, which they probably won't. Um, you know, I don't think playing Purdue is a game that that Rick Barnes or Tennessee would think, oh my goodness, you know, like this is a, a really tough, uh, really tough draw. Relative, I mean, you're going to play somebody really good. If you're fortunate enough to make it to the Elite Eight, um, I, I, I'd rather play Purdue than Houston, probably, or uh, or UConn. 
um, would be my way. And Tennessee played, you know, UNC already. So they played a really tough schedule. So I can't wait. Um, but, yes, a great deal of trepidation given past history. Well, you mentioned the Peacocks of St. Peter's. And, look, if, if Rick Barnes was to lose that game, it would be devastating. But at the same time, he's still safe. Uh, but for Tennessee fans, I mean, what is a successful year? You kind of alluded to that. But based on the Tennessee team we've seen, it looks like a team, if, if things hit right, they could win the entire thing. But getting to a Final Four, I would assume that's kind of the uh, – the, the the kind of the bar right now for Tennessee fans? Yeah, well, Tennessee Tennessee is like Alabama, never been to a Final Four. Um, and I may not get this 100% right, but I was talking about this yesterday on my program. BYU has been to the most tournaments and never made the NCAA tournament. Um, then I think it's, uh, then I think it's uh, Xavier, and you guys can look this up and, and see if I'm correct, Xavier and Mizzou have both been, and then it's Tennessee-Bama. I think I'm correct in that, that Tennessee and Alabama are both two of the top five teams that have been to the most NCAA tournaments and not made the Final Four. I think Tennessee's been to one more NCAA tournament than Alabama, and it's much like Alabama. I think Tennessee is 1-8 in eight in Sweet 16 games, which is really kind of crazy to think about. It, so it's not as if they're losing in the first round every year. I mean, I wouldn't imagine there's that many teams that have been to way more. I mean, the Sweet 16 is a good year for mo- almost every program in the country. So to get to the Sweet 16, I think Tennessee's been nine times and go one and eight in those games is is really just kind of hard to believe. And, you know, the one year Tennessee went to the Elite Eight, I went to that game in person. They lost just a back-breaking game uh, late, missed a free throw that would have given them the lead with like 10 seconds left and ended up losing by a point, I think, against Michigan State um, in a game that, that they really had uh, were in good shape to win. Uh, so anyway, it's been, uh, it's been a, a, a tough uh, march for, for Tennessee fans. And yeah, I think, look, an Elite Eight equalizing, you know, if you, if you went to the Elite Eight and lost to Purdue, uh, and, you know, didn't go to the Final Four, that would be disappointing. I think it would be crushing not to be in the Sweet 16, disappointing not to be in the uh, the Elite Eight. Um, and if you got to the Final Four, you would feel like, okay, this is, uh, this is a validation season. LT and I have a stake bet on uh, three and a half is the, the number of SEC teams in the Sweet 16. He has the over, I've got the under. We did this before the bracket was drawn. We actually did it a few weeks ago. Um, now that you've seen the bracket, do you feel like over three and a half SEC teams in the Sweet 16 or under? I haven't filled my bracket out yet. I'm going to do my gambling picks probably this afternoon um, to get ready. But uh, just you know, having looked at the bracket, first of all, Auburn got screwed, um, and I and I think the SEC really needs to think about the way they play that conference title game on Sunday. Um, you know, we saw Tennessee not get a benefit a couple of years ago. I don't understand how Auburn is number four, I believe, in the Ken Pomeroy. I think they're like number five in the net. Um, and somehow they got a four seed in the toughest four seeds bracket in the uh, and shipped all the way out to Spokane, Washington. Um, I, I think Auburn got screwed uh, in, in seeding. Uh, I think Kentucky should be in the Sweet 16. I think Tennessee should be in the Sweet 16. Um, I actually like St. Mary's to beat Alabama um, uh, because I, I don't know about you guys. Alabama just refuses to play defense, and I don't think you can make a significant tournament run uh, when you start to play really good teams without being able to get lockdown stops down the stretch. And I watched that performance against Florida. Uh, I watched them fall apart against Tennessee, uh, the disaster performance on the road against Florida. I just, and not to mention the 117 or whatever they gave up at Kentucky, Nate Oates can't get his team to play defense. Um, and so I can't, uh, I, I can't pick Alabama to make much of a run if they aren't willing to, to play defense. I may be able to just outscore a couple of teams, but sooner or later you're going to run into a team that can get stops. Uh, I like Auburn to go to the Sweet 16. I think South Carolina um, has a decent chance. What, there are six? Um, and they're playing against uh, – would they get Creighton? I think it wouldn't stun me if South Carolina – I like what, uh, what what they've done this year and how gritty they are at times. Oh, laziest team in the tournament. Dunaway calls them lazy. The laziest yeah. team in the tournament. South Carolina? I don't yes. know where he gets that. <laughs> I don't I, know I've seen him play in person lazy. three times in Tuscaloosa, in Auburn, and in Nashville. Lazy. Lazy okay. team. 
Uh, they were picked the last, I right. think. Yeah, I mean, they <laughs> overexceeded <laughs> everything about yeah, like, Now they're meeting the preseason expectations. Person, okay. You're the only person in America who thinks that South Carolina is a disappointment this year uh, and not playing hard. But uh, Yeah, but and I, watch I, out I, for him in the tournament now because i got a feeling he's got him going out in round one. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, no, yeah, quack, certainly. quack. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, so, uh, and so I would probably go over. I mean, you got eight in there. Uh, you know, I know the Florida injury. Uh, to their big man is is brutal, and I hope he does he gets better. Um, but uh, but I like Tennessee, I like Kentucky, I like Auburn all to be in the Sweet 16, uh, and then I think that one of those other five teams will uh, will make a run as well. So I'd go over three and a half. For what it's worth, Clay Travis is with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. For what it's worth, back to your comment on the SEC tournament, I just don't know that it would matter even Clay if they moved it to Saturday. I just don't think the committee pays any attention to the conference tournaments. And my point there would be Auburn was almost a consensus four seed going into this tournament. And even, yeah. on, even on Saturday, the committee knew they were playing for the conference championship and still didn't bump them up. So I, I don't know that winning the conference championship would have changed anything had it been on Saturday. I just don't think they pay attention. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's uh, – then, then why do it? Right. Well, I mean, I, mean I, I don't disagree. And I wonder if, you know, we've talked about the future of the conference football – uh, the football conference championship games, yeah. and, and I do wonder the future of the conference tournaments. Yeah, look, I mean, I think it makes sense. Uh, look, I, well, first of all, I hate it for all the small schools where it actually determines whether or not you're going to make the NCAA tournament. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me that, you know, a team can go whatever it is, 15-3 and three, uh, in the regular season, have a bad half, lose on a last-second shot, and all those 18 conference games don't matter the only thing that matters is the one conference championship. So um, I would not be, I'm not in favor of, uh, of, of even deciding the small conferences based on the tournament. Um, Personally, I think you play the regular season and figure it out same way I would uh, to a large extent, the sec football championship. You know, I think you find out who the best team is by playing a long grueling regular season. You shouldn't suddenly change uh, your determination. Um, I mean, I think the sec basketball tournament is fun. But I don't know that it's relevant, particularly if they are talking about expanding the NCAA tournament even more, uh, which seems to be what is being uh, sort of bandied about in a significant way. Uh, But I don't like playing games that don't matter. So um, effectively, Auburn, I mean, it's hard to win three games in three days or four games in four days as Texas A&M, you know, would have been trying to do. Uh, if they, or I guess Florida was trying to do, right? Florida was trying to win four and four. Yeah. Like, what benefit do they get? Um, you know, you put your body through a lot to play four big time games like that and then immediately turn around and play. When does Auburn play, Thursday or Friday? They play Friday. They get a break to play. At least they go to Spokane, <laughs> but they, at least they don't have to play till Friday. They leave today. Yeah. They literally got home. Uh, <laughs> About 34 hours ago from but, Nashville. But, but Stephen Pearl yeah. just told us they're not, if they continue to win, they're not coming home. They're going straight to Boston. So this is about to be, they hope, a two week road trip. Yeah, but that's crazy, right? They send them to Spokane and then send them, they have to go to Boston. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Alabama got a better break in the sense that they go Spokane to LA. I mean, at least, you know, you stay out west. Auburn is in the east bracket, which is the toughest of the brackets against the overall number one seed. They have to start in Spokane and then go to Boston. Just, it doesn't yeah, make it a ton of sense. Yeah, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And um, yeah, look, I, I think Auburn of all the teams out there probably got screwed the most um, that I saw of the uh, of the bracket reveal. Um, and uh, and again, if you're not going to reward a team for winning your conference tournament, then then what is the actual impact there? It just doesn't seem like a, a very, a very solid decision to me. Hey, Clay, um, Oh, sorry, man. Yeah, I was just no. Say- I was just going to say nobody cares, by the way, on anything but the NCAA tournament. So it's great if your team wins the conference tournament, but by you know three days later, if you lose in the first round, the whole season's a disaster anyway. Uh, I was going to close on the NFL. We haven't talked to you about Derrick Henry. You're a big Titans guy. Eight seasons with the Titans. He's 30 years old now to the Ravens. Seems like a great fit. But how would you sum up Derrick Henry's time as a Titan? I think you can make the argument that Derrick Henry is the best type. Um, now, there would be people out there who would push back and say Steve McNair, you know, he won an MVP, went to a Super Bowl. I think that's probably the argument that would win. Uh, but, I, you know, if you were doing, you know, we're doing bracket challenges right now. If you were doing a bracket challenge for the greatest Titan player, again, I'm leaving the Oilers aside. I'm talking about since they've moved to Tennessee the last 25 years. 
I think most people would have Steve McNair one, and uh, I think you would put, I would put uh, Derrick Henry two on that list. Uh, you know, Eddie George certainly would be in that mix. Mike White Deck, um, you know, they're, they're, they're that era when they went to the Super Bowl and had a lot of success. Chris Johnson would be in the mix. Um, you know, they've had uh, a series, I think, of elite playmakers, but, but um, you know, Derrick Henry is going to be a Hall of Famer, and there are not a lot of Hall of Fame types. So, uh, to, to me, I think you'd have to put him two, maybe to uh, Steve McNair. The, the other side of the Titan story, though, is the end of this awful decision that your front office made on A.J. Brown to, to not pay A.J. Brown, then turn around and basically play Calvin Ridley. What you were going to have to pay A.J. Brown is just insane. Yeah, to give more money to an older, less accomplished yep. receiver to try to make up for the mistake that you made by not getting the A.J. Brown deal done. Uh, is, uh, I mean, look, I don't believe, you guys know this, I'm not a huge Will Levis guy. I think, if, and unfortunately, the number of young, incredibly talented quarterbacks in the AFC, I mean, Mahomes is still only 27 or whatever. You know, we got another decade of him being incredible, probably maybe longer than that, depending on how healthy he happens to stay. Um, but to me, this is just a, uh, it, you know, we're in a tough spot um, uh, in the AFC and not to mention even in the AFC South, we'll see how Trevor Lawrence does. But C.J. Stroud looks phenomenal. We still don't know if Anthony Richardson got hurt, how good he is. Uh, I'm just not very optimistic on the next uh, decade of tight um, uh, success in football. All right, Clay Travis, Outkick founder, Fox Sports. Enjoy the tournament, Clay. We'll uh, talk to you next week. All right, sounds good. Y'all too. All right, yeah. thank you. Clay with us on the Johnston RVCenter.com hotline. Um, all right, it's time to remind you again about Coca-Cola Spice right now. Uh, I'm supposed to tell you that you enjoy the taste of the spiced side of life with the all-new Coca-Cola Spice. Unexpected burst of raspberry and spice flavors. But when I open up the bottle, that's what they tell me to tell you. When I open up the bottle, it sort of tastes like summer to me. Oh, a little you know taste of summer? A little, little burst of summer. Little, uh, you get that, um, that smell that you... You almost yeah. would get like you're outside. Yeah, uh, make a, you feel like a kid again. In a fruit orchard. Uh, orchard. Yeah. Um, it, it, has a, it has a nice there little aroma go. to it when you open it up. And then the taste. Jimmy Summer. Tastes like summertime. Mm. With explosions of flavor in your mouth. It's Coca-Cola Spiced. A refreshing drink. You can get it at a retailer today. Or in those little machines you put money in, they kick them out ice cold for you. What are those called? Um, a vending machine? Uh, I called them Coke machines growing up. <laughs> I it was, did, too. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, no matter what it says, it's a Coke machine. <laughs> even, if yeah. I, even if it wasn't a Coke coming out, I called it, it a Coke machine. It's a Coke machine, yeah. Sometimes I was getting a Sprite. Sometimes, sometimes I was getting a Sprite. Uh, this was back when we were deviants. If you rock those things enough and they hit the wall, they would spit Cokes out. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I yeah. never did that. Mm. Uh, yeah, I hit the fun I, you miss. And you know, it, when, I hit mailboxes. I didn't do that. No, when you look on it, it's got the little body like doing this, oh, like yeah. with, with the uh, the vending machine coming down on him. Yeah. And it's like. Causes you know, more deaths a year than uh, shark, shark attacks. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Coke, yeah. Coke machines falling on people well, causes yeah. more death? I yep. mean, you think about if one fell on you, what would it do? And I mean, we got pretty close. We'd get that thing up on the tips. Yep. On the tips. There you go. Hey, Tony Bennett's on the uh, the wrong side of the bracket this year. Tony Bennett. Thank God he won a national championship because he ain't yeah. winning another. It's just so way, up and down for him. By though. the way, yeah. if you go back to his national championship year, the year before they lose, they were the one sixteen loser. Yeah, I could see this from Purdue this year. Yeah, and then boom, they go on that national championship run. But that included. Uh, an opening round, was it a one sixteen matchup again that they were trailing in the first half? It was a first-round game where they were a good seed against a double-digit seed. Yeah, I think they were a four the year they won it. Okay, so they're, but they're trailing in the first round again. They were about to get upset in the first round again. They were trailing in that game, and they came back and won that game. I think they went to overtime with Purdue and beat them. We all know about the questionable officiating late in the semifinal game. Do you remember uh, the ice cold free throws? Do you remember who hit them? Uh, who? Kyle Guy. Yeah, Kyle Guy. Right. He was that guy. And I mean that the pressure for him to hit those free throws. Yeah. But I do kind of think this Purdue team, all this pressure is obviously on Matt Painter and Zach Eady in his final run with Purdue. But I could see them do what Virginia do, did, lose to 16, which they did last year to Fairleigh Dickinson, and turn that thing around. If I only had three teams to win it all, Purdue would be one of my three. Purdue would be one of them. Probably yeah. so, yeah. Uh, I'm setting up this will, Tony but... Bennett bite, though, with Virginia, who's actually playing tonight um, as they uh, get Colorado State. Here's the Tony Bennett, the Virginia. Some said didn't belong in the tournament, having to play in the play-in game. 
Can you talk a little bit about how the approach this year has been different as a bubble team than in years past when you're more of a lock? Yeah, I think, you know, the last number of games, um, handful of games, six or seven games, um, you know, every game was meaningful. That situation and, and all those teams that are on the bubble understand that. That's a little different experience than, okay, we can drop one or go into the conference room, we're going to be a, maybe our seed drop. So I think it's, it's a, it's important, and I always told you guys, it's good to be playing meaningful games at this time of the year. The alternative, if it's not meaningful, unless you're there, um, is, uh, is not as good. We kept talking about it in the year all the time, put the blinders on, and you know, the Kentucky Derby, the horses, they get in there and just blinders on, head down, and run the race in front of you, and don't look left or right. And that's kind of been the approach for us always, but especially um, being a team that was on the bubble. They got a tough one tonight with Colorado State. Uh, Colorado State, Virginia winner gets Texas. He's got such a fascinating record at Virginia. I mean, everybody remembers the national championship, obviously, but... But the year before, they were a more dominant team in the yeah, regular season. In, in the third uh, third year, round of 64, then the NIT, Sweet 16, won a game, got bounced. Elite 8, won a game, got bounced. Lost to a 16 seed, won the national championship. Uh, one and done, NIT, one and done. I mean, that's his record. It is it is so up and down. Landmine believers saying Virginia is brutal watching. We brought this oh, up multiple times, watch, but yeah. it, it is like watching Alabama under Gene Stallings. Yep. Like uh, he got a national championship, and, and it is a little different. Like great defense is fun to watch in football. I don't know if it's fun to watch in not. basketball. I can tell you it's not. Yeah. Um, that's uh, part of uh, playing games tonight, starting the NCAA tournament, 540, Wagner and Howard, winner against North Carolina, then Colorado State and Virginia. Brody says Colorado State beats Texas if they beat Virginia tonight. Brody, I agree with you. I said that earlier in the show. I think LT agreed. A uh, winner of tonight's game has got a good chance against Texas, especially if it's Colorado State, because I think uh, the Mountain West, uh, as bad as, as Auburn – got jobbed a little bit being sent to the region they got sent to as a four seed. I think the Mountain West got underseeded across the board with uh, what their teams put on the on paper on tape this year. So we'll see if Colorado State can live up to maybe some of those Mountain West expectations uh, that a lot of us have for them in the NCAA tournament. We'll talk more tournament as we continue on in the show and some college football news uh, still to come. All that on the show that's being brought to you by the folks at Hemphill LT. Uh, 205-229-2090. Trust the name Birmingham Stress since 1954 for all of your plumbing, heating, and cooling needs. Whether you experience uh, any of those issues, your home or business, they're ready to serve you. 205-229-2090 or HemphillServices.com. Follow the next round on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Next Round Live. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Gutter Cap. Gutter Cap's that patented aluminum cover system that fits over most existing gutters to keep out debris and eliminate that gutter cleaning. It's back with a lifetime warranty, almost 20 year service record right here in Birmingham. Stay off that dangerous ladder forever. 45% off the retail price now if you call guttercapbirmingham.com. Call my good friend Chris Stewart now, 205 823 2212. Cap it, don't snap it, it's Gutter Cap. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Man, that's a bold question. But it's got that irresistible taste to back it up. One thing's for sure, when you've got an irresistible tasty match like Zero Sugar and Zero Calories, something sensational is bound to happen. It's too bad you can't taste it with your ears because this Coke Zero Sugar tastes amazing. Truthfully, it's hard to put into words, and that's my job. You'll have to take a taste for yourself. Coke Zero Sugar. Best Coke ever? Let me introduce you to the new line of Red Wing Athletic Work Shoes. This great new line is perfect for the industrial athlete, the guy who is working on concrete or running through the warehouse all day long. Red Wing Athletics use the same technology found in a running shoe with soft mesh uppers, a lightweight aluminum toe for protection, and non-slip soles. This shoe is a winner. This comfortable new line of safety shoes are perfect for warehousing and light manufacturing. Plus, the colors look great. Stop by your local Red Wing shoe store, have your feet measured, and test drive a new pair of Red Wing Athletic Athletic Work Shoes. There are so many things I love about walk-ons. Authentic, mouth-watering Louisiana cuisine prepared fresh daily from scratch. A great beer selection and TVs everywhere to watch the big game every day of the week. And of course, they've got two great locations on Highway 280 and 119 and at Hoover near the Hoover Met. Walk-ons is also a great place for happy hour. Two to six Monday through Friday with $5 moonshine swirls, $5 house pours, and half-price appetizers. And it's an easy take-home experience for the family as well. Highway 280 and Hoover with walk-ons. 
Follow Next Round Live on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The social media team at Next Round Live is dedicated to giving you daily news conferences and practice video from UAB, Alabama, Auburn, and around college football. Follow and compare to the sites you used to visit. You'll also get the latest highlights and news from the Next Round Daily Show. Turn on the notifications so you don't miss a thing. Next Round Live on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. See more at nextroundlive.com. Hey, for all of your IT and printing needs, reach out to our friends at Xerox Business Solutions. Look, I'm still one of those old school guys. I print my notes every single day for the show. If you watch the show here on the next round, you see all the notes in front of me. From day one, Xerox Business Solutions, they've been with us here at the next round. Local for over 45 years. For all of your IT and printing needs, visit XeroxBusinessSolutions.com or call 205-969-3000. That's 205-969-3000. Back with you on the next round. I, I just want to say I appreciate the show so much. There are days I come in when I'm not always in, you know, peak Jim Peppy mode. And huh. today's one of those days. And I appreciate sitting down here doing these three hours. And it makes me feel better when it's all said and done. That being said, as we approach another bracket challenge unveiling tomorrow on the show, I wanted to add this is my storm restoration roofing question of the day. Rockstar, chime in, please. Um, if I asked you guys what is the greatest bracket challenge payoff we've had in the history of this show, I know what my number one is, and I know what my number two is, and what I, my number three is. I'd love to know what you guys think uh, is the best bracket challenge payoff we've done, what's number two and what's number three. Uh, Brownie, do you have three in your I, head? I, I think... The best. See, I look at it from a different point of view that you guys look at it from. I think I look at it on what content do we get out of it, not necessarily what how makes you think that we don't do. That. I said I think, Jim. Um, I, I I don't necessarily look at it. I look on, at it smarter than you do, Jim. <laughs> Jim Jim came in here not in his peak mood. I don't no, know if he, you know. He's, but he said he loves it. <laughs> best three hours of his day. I I I look at it from what did the audience get out of it, not how much did it punish me. And that's all I'm saying is, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you've frequently said you don't think I get punished enough on these trips. Uh, there are some that I think you've been punished on a lot in this trip. Yeah, but, the, and but you're, most, number, you're number one Well, in, in mine. I'm, mo- uh, my favorite one is number one. It's yours. Most of the time. Of course, of course we're choosing. Well, I mean, I do. 11 out of 14, yes, I bid yes. you, I think. But I, I look at it from what did the audience get out of it? So that that's the way I view it. So I think the audience very much enjoyed me making a fool of myself on a Mac game. Yeah, that, that was, that's, that was, that's uh, number one for okay. me. Rob, Rob Ross, Ross at the it Mac gets, game. It gets yeah. brought up more than any. Yeah. I, I I really enjoyed the content we produced from Alien Fest, but we were not even doing a show then. That was in in our in our downtime. So I think it kind of got lost because we weren't doing a show yet. Um I did like Lance's content that he produced with the witch on the train and all of that. I like that. Yeah, we had, and that was going to be my number one, just because of how enjoyable it ended up being with my daughter. Like I didn't want to do that at all because you guys did it the wrong way. You should have sent me a lot further Are than you, Salina, Kansas. You say that it took yeah. you three days to get home. Well, it yeah. did. Ironically, it was Spokane we were going to send you to. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean that would have made the most sense, but I was so nervous about that trip because I thought we were going to have to do that, and I thought it would take like a week to get back. Um, but I would go as far as difficulty done away doing stand up. That's number two on my list. Yeah, number two on my list probably would be um, me and Layton's trip out west, and then number three would be Bob Ross. Yeah, I will tell you this goes back to the very first one that I enjoyed tremendously. We never bring up anymore, and ironically, the guy who's the best picker on the show lost our very first bracket challenge. But I enjoyed the heck out of the very first one when you had to dress up as Flash and stand on the side of the 280 holding up a sign, I lost the bracket challenge because I was at a point at CBS 42 where they sort of let me do what I wanted to do. And I actually did I remember the, that. the late, the, the five and six o'clock sports cast from the side of highway 280, the greenest grass on 280, oh, the greenest beautiful. grass yep. on 280. I don't know how they do that. And you out either. there, uh, and you dressed up as flash in full uniform, holding a sign. 
I lost the bracket challenge. And we forget about that because that was the very first one. It was so long ago. Well, navigating and, and Brown the, has lost almost all of them since. Yeah. Well, the navigating the superhero without like to have tights on in your junk, it's just a it's a bad combination. Yeah. And so I had to wear that outfit like driving down 280. And so people, you know, because it's not Halloween. People yeah. are like pulling up next to me. And they're like, you look like flash. You, you look like a character on Big Bang Theory. Yeah. yeah. And 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 uh I'll never forget this. So we were working at that point for the worst market manager in history. We can't say his name anymore because of a letter we got. Um, but I even remember that guy circling back and saying, this was so cool that you guys did that because it was like an old radio prank. So I think our bracket challenges have been something that I think the the listeners and viewers really enjoy. Um, I think after the fact, they're really not that bad for us. They're pretty good memories. I am really interested to see what is going to be pitched. Yeah. I do like your idea that people need to hitch their wagons to us. Are <laughs> we going right. to do that? I don't know. I, I mean, didn't bring it up in the meeting yesterday. The yeah. meeting, uh, we ended up flying by quickly, and it, you didn't bring up brought it up yesterday. But I would love to uh, tie everyone else into the challenge here. So uh, there's some uh, grouped rooting interest up here. It could be a whole I lot of fun. I think they'd be up for it. Are you up for it, Rocky? Well, I don't know how we would do it. Do like, you I, know I, the punishments? Oh, it'd be oh, real easy. Yeah, see, Rockstar yeah. knows the punishments. It'd be real easy. Uh, we have three people here. Okay. We have 12 employees. We put all the other nine employees' names into a box, right? And we just, after after the brackets are locked, you guys can't influence the bracket. We just draw out. This is on Brown's team. Boom. It's Rockstar. This but, is on LT's some of the team. It's Forster. It's pun- some of the punishments, including three people with one individual what are they going to, when you see the yeah, punishment, like what are these that, three people going to do? That's why I'm hesitant because I don't know what the punishments are and it may not make sense to have okay, a group. Well, how about individualized this? for you yeah, guys? Right. So I, I know you, I know you want to punish us too, but I don't know what that's going to do. Yeah. Well, he's making it seem like it's going to be tough to do. I think if it, if it fits. Oh and yeah, it totally. Like if it, if it works, but yeah. like there's some things like, like on this person's punishment, like I don't know what we could do, but just like sit there. So, uh, speaking, to, so tomorrow at 11 o'clock in that segment to start the final hour of the show in that segment somewhere, uh, I don't know if we'll have a guest at 11. If we do after the guest, we will do the unveiling of the uh, the punishments. We don't know what they are. The other folks up here this year have decided the punishments individually for each of us if we lose. We'll do that at, in the 11 o'clock hour. 11 o'clock tomorrow is when our brackets are locked. 11 o'clock tomorrow, our brackets are Real locked. Real quick, all three of you have passports, right? <laughs> yes. Updated. I've got yeah. I've got okay. updated. Yeah. Yes, hey, yes. so. Uh, I have all my shots. <laughs> Dunaway, when we brought up the bracket challenge, you, the first thing you said is, I'm not doing what? I'm not jumping out of a plane. The algorithm I got yesterday, one of these videos that came up, this dude is a professional jumper. He's got 800 jumps. It was his third of the day, and he was filming a dude doing his first ever jump. He got so excited about it, he jumps out of the plane without a shoot. Uh-uh, Lance. Oh, yeah. So the first guy with, the, with the, the dual jump, they pull the thing, and then you see him just, oh, my God, I forgot my parachute. How do you get – how how are you in the air without your parachute on? That ought to be like – that's yeah, on the ground. You board. Yeah. That's on yeah. the ground, yeah, and we're going to go and put the parachutes on. You're right. I mean, I am putting that thing yeah. on securely before we take that's off. That's right. We're yeah. testing that thing. Didn't work out for him, though. Uh, we love all the uh, – all the uh, great stuff that has jumped in there. Uh, Rod says, make Emily Grace wear off-brand <laughs> clothing. She's got a reputation now with our viewers and listeners of, uh, of uh, <laughs> I don't guess she rents the runway. She owns the runway. She literally <laughs> likes high cotton. She's yeah. got to deal with that. Our yeah. friends at Storm Restoration Roofing will get you, uh, we'll get on your roof and uh, give a free no-cost roof inspection. 205-542-3531. 205-542-3531. Or just look him up. On Facebook, Greg from Pell City, A plus rated with a Better Business Bureau, locally owned for over 20 years. Insurance companies trust him, and what he does a free, no cost roof inspection, no obligation. Greg gets on that roof, satisfied, satisfied customers all over our viewing and listening area. All you have to do is uh, jump in our chat room and say, "Hey, has anybody ever used Greg from Pell City?" And they will rave about him. So jump in there right now, 205-542-3531, or Greg from Pell City for that free no-cost roof inspection. He is Storm Restoration Roofing. Four Downs today brought to you by Slice. LT will tell you about Slice in just a second. After we do the Four Downs, we always rock star starts with, what is it? First down. First down today. Basketball or football? Oh, team? Brown's going to love this. It's nothing but celebrity yeah, birthdays. Yeah, my favorite part of four it's downs. It's all celebrity yeah. birthdays. What a it's, day. It's like a Thursday on a Tuesday. Let's do this. Uh, Glenn Close, 77 years old. Who played crazy or better? Jack Nicholson and The Shining or Glenn Close and Fatal Attraction? Uh, or if you just tell me the craziest uh, on-film on, on film character you guys have ever seen. But she 
scared straight a lot of dudes back in 1987. I agree. Uh, Glenn Clo- that was a scary movie. Glenn Close um, in, uh, in Fatal Attraction for me when you started. Was it Bunnies? Yeah, it was a bunny. Pet it was bunny. Uh, Michael Douglas and Ann Archer had bought their kid a bunny, and uh, Glenn Close thought it was a good idea to, to bull it. Mm. Mm. She was nominated for uh, Best Actress for that. Mm. That was an incredible role. Scary, scary. But it did make me want to live in a loft and uh, have one of those elevators. elevators. <laughs> Would you have stopped at mid, uh, mid-flight? <laughs> of course. I mean, Jack Nicholson was pretty crazy, though. I mean, that, that's a tough question. I really don't know. I don't know the best way to answer yeah, that. Yeah, they both played crazy so they did. well. You know, sometimes you just wonder well, if Forrester's got a great one. Uh, go ahead. Give Forrester his microphone. Go for it, Forrester. Oh, Kathy Bates in Misery. She's... Uh, Next misunderstood. Level. Crazy. You're misunderstood. Yes. Yeah, I mean, she lives for what? Uh, James Kahn's novelist character, Shelley something. I can't remember. She, uh, he hadn't finished the novel yet. She's going to keep him there until he finishes the novel. But that is one of the more disturbing scenes yeah. in film history. Hobbling. Uh, uh, second just, down. Just that sound of, of the cracking. Oh, Jim, 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 Jim. Please. Jim, 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 Jim. And, and please, Jim. what are you doing? And yeah. please. Richard Fonsworth got shotgun too. <laughs> Did? I mean, she was out for blood. Uh, Andy Reid, 66. Better career, Andy Reid or Andy Griffith? Well, Andy Griffith, the Andy Griffith show has stood the test of time. Man. That he, was show gosp- that, he was a comedian. Yeah, he was a gospel yeah, singer. Yeah, he still had airs Matlock. today. Yeah. Producer. Yep. Producer. I mean, Andy Reid would have been the greatest coach of this generation if not for Bill Belichick. In fact, he might have gone down as yeah. the greatest of all time if not for Bill Belichick. Well, I don't some know. of those Eagles teams would have gotten yeah. uh, kind of a better bounce in some yep. of those NFC yep. championship games. But I still think Andy Reid is probably right now, if you went with your top five Shula, NFL coaches of Belichick, all time. Belichick, Reid. I guess um, Vince Lombardi. Lombardi. Mm-hmm. So Reed's, Reed's won how many I mean, now? McVay. McVay. He's won <laughs> two. won how many? Two. He's won two. Yeah, two. None with yeah, Philly, two with Kansas City? No, he's won three, right? Yeah, three. three one with Philly, three, right? Yeah. No, he didn't win a world championship with Philly. He no, he lost to oh. uh, New England, but I thought he won three with Pat Mahomes. I thought he's only won two with Mahomes. I could be wrong, though. Um, I mean, at some point. Yeah, one more. One more for him, and I would yeah. say Andy Reid. Right now, I'll go Andy Griffith. Yeah, I think I'll go Andy Griffith, too. That's a, that's a really, really tough one, though. Third down. <laughs> Clayton Kershaw is 35 years old today. Dodgers start Major League Baseball tomorrow, yeah, right? In yeah. South Korea. It, yep. Will you get up and watch uh, Two-game series with the Padres. It's Probably a, not. It's 5.05, early, right? 5.05 yeah. no. a.m. Central. Oh. I'll catch in a workout the probably the back half. Yeah, back yeah. half innings. Yeah, Mookie Betts at shortstop, by the way. Yeah, pretty, pretty incredible if you would have said that based on the last couple of shortstops they've had there. Um, and Corey Seager and Trey Turner is pretty crazy. Uh, Clayton Kershaw, though, ultimately better career. Clayton Kershaw or Joe Burrow? Uh, you know, uh, it's odd. Joe's probably more known for what he does in the postseason, and Kershaw's more criticized for what he does right. in the postseason. That's a, that's the I'm just so there. glad Kershaw got a championship because I, I can't even imagine what it would have been like. The narrative would have been awful. Because he's got a championship, and the narrative is still there. Because even it after is, the yeah, championship, yeah. he's had some failures. Um, I think he probably, if if they stay 90% healthy, he probably gets one this year. I mean, that team, you never know how chemistry really is going to be, but boy, they are stacked. Yeah. But, but how big of a contributor will he be in the postseason? Well, you know, I mean, that's what it comes yeah. down to. But I, I would say right now, Clayton Kershaw. How uh, many wins does yeah, he I would have, say, Lance? Yeah, you know yeah. off the top I would head? say Kershaw's got 220 wins. Because nobody's going to get to 300 again. No. So I don't know what the modern-day 300 wins is. Is it 200? Is it 220? I don't know. Yeah. What do you, I mean, I don't know what you but guys I, think. I think he's around 220. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, some dead wood here while you look at our brownie. Andy Reid does have three with the Chiefs. And uh, Nick says, how in the world do you live Bill Walsh off the goat list when you do goats? He won two, right? No. We won. He won no, two so with Montana and Seifert. one with Young. Yeah, yeah Seifert, Seifert won. came in after and won the Young one. Right, but but Bill Walsh won how many with Joe two Montana? Two or three. I think it's only two, honestly. I thought it was three. Uh, Fourth. Right. Go ahead. Fourth down. 210 regular season wins. Close. Now I'll look up Bill Walsh. <laughs> okay, Bruce Willis. Um, it's really a sad story with Bruce Willis, what's going on behind the scenes, unable to really, you know, obviously not acting anymore, but 69 years old today. Happy birthday, Bruce. Memory um, loss, right? I don't it's like know. A, it's, aphasia. It's kind of like a, a version of dementia. Yeah. Yeah, but motor skills, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff that really are um, declining, and it's, it's really sad because Bruce is one of those guys, seems like, just the ultimate guys guy. But if I ask you guys your favorite Bruce Willis movie, I've got three that really jump out. Now, obviously, I mean, Die Hard is kind of the, the all-to-go-to. 
Um, okay. A guilty pleasure mine's blind date. Mine is going to be, this Bruce Willis, mine is going to be, I know. one of mine's going to be a little bit off the board. I know where you're going to go, Hearts War. Hearts War. Excellent movie. Yeah, I heard you yeah. talk about it before. Well, really it's good. got such a tremendous plot twist. Pr prison camp. And, prison camp yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, POW camp, yeah. yeah. Now, they do a trial. Ex excellent movie, yeah. Rocky, yeah. have you seen Blind Date lately? It does not hold up. I know, but like, it's nostalgia. The You Alright, yeah. Agnes, and then uh, 12 Monkeys, and I'm trying to think of... 12 Monkeys, probably my favorite. 12 Monkeys, Pulp Fiction, which I know Brown hates, incredible movie, or or Sin City. Yeah, Six Sense. He was Six Sense. Six I would Sense put that was in good. there too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Sin City. Yeah, that's, uh, Sin City was was really well done. If you guys underrated, I, I don't think y'all like Apocalypse. You know, they're not crazy about it. Yeah. But if you do, Twelve Monkeys, as Rockstar just Great. said, Brad Pitt's one of his best performances. Yeah. Sin City, man, that's a pack of girls, a gun-toting, sword-swinging girls. Well, Jessica Alba, in all her glory, um, wearing the uh, the chaps, yeah, the Texas I, Longhorn like chaps. Yeah, whole nine yards. Not Jessica oh, Alba, but that was uh, Amanda Peet. Amanda yeah. Peet. Yeah. She's got an interesting way of getting people's attention in that movie. It works every it time. It does work every, every time. time. All right, so a lot of people are saying Heart Tour is really good. Have you never seen I've it? I've never seen it. No, I really enjoyed it. I, You and I have a vastly different taste in movies, so I'm not going to recommend it to you, but I very much like it. I mean, I mean give it a whirl. Yeah. You could come back and say, God, I hate it. It's such a cheesy movie. I don't know what you'll say, but I very much liked it. I think it's very well done. And he's good in it, too. And that's four down. All so right, they, Bill Walsh won three all with Montana, though. Don't forget, Seifert won the one with Steve yeah, Young. Okay. That's, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. All Montana, Bill Walsh, and yep. Seifert, and then Mariucci did not win one, right? Mooch did not, I no. don't think. No. no. He didn't win one with Young? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, Slice, though, I was at the newest location. It should be open either later this week or next week. We'll give you more information on that. But we enjoyed great pizza. Got to hang out with Jason Bajaya last night at the Calcutta. Um, it's the newest location in Edgewood right by – Odie's that we talk about all the time, but they've got four original locations. Uh, Lakeview, I was at that one this weekend. Vestavia, Montevallo, Crestline Park. Uh, local pizza, local ingredients from the hot mama to the soul pie. You're going to absolutely love it. For more information, SliceBirmingham.com. Our pro uh, team, uh, the Birmingham Squadron, in action tonight, 7 o'clock, Legacy Arena. A chance to get out there before you jump into watching the college game on Thursday through the weekend to enjoy the squadron Tonight at 7 o'clock, they're taking on the Magic from uh, down in Florida. They're in town. $5 beer in the chill zone all night long. You can get your tickets at BirminghamSquadron.com. BirminghamSquadron.com. It is Commander Mascot Plush Doll Giveaway Night. Limited uh, editions, limited supplies. So get there early and go tonight. You can get your tickets at the door or you can go to BirminghamSquadron.com. BirminghamSquadron.com. 7 o'clock tonight and then back at it Thursday night at 7 o'clock as well. Should be a whole lot of fun. Two of the best scorers in the league. T-shirt night is coming up Thursday night. So um should be a fun week with our friends at the Birmingham Squadron, BirminghamSquadron.com. When we come back, we continue the conversation about the NCAA tournament and more football. And Bo Nix, if you woke up today a Bo Nix fan, then you're happy about one guy's prospectus of his upcoming NFL draft. That is next on TNR. Take the next round anywhere you go with official next round gear. Buy yours today at nextround.store. Spring weather is here, and our friends at Hemphill Services are offering a $69 HVAC tune-up plus 10% off any service call when you mention the next round. Call Adam, Chad, and the guys at Hemphill Services. Make sure your HVAC unit is ready to keep up with the changing weather. Hemphill Services, locally owned and operated independent train dealer. The team can service all makes and models. For all of your plumbing, heating, and cooling needs, call Hemphill Services. It's hard to stop a train. 205-229-2090 or HemphillServices.com. That's 205-229-2090. HempHillServices.com Every day, someone is ridiculed and mocked for the clothing they chose to wear. It's a harsh reality we all must face. But you have the chance to change all of that with one visit to nextround.store. For just a few minutes of browsing, you will observe so many clothing options, from hats to hoodies to t-shirts. Please, for yourself or someone you love, go to nextround.store and embrace the warmth of true attire.
Hey, let me tell you about our friends at Urology Centers of Alabama. Compassionate and comprehensive urological care with 35 physicians, 17 locations across Alabama. Their patient-centered approach to all of your urological needs. Remember, they've got that new men's health center. It is beautiful, helping men with a wide range of sensitive male issues in a comfortable environment. You can always go online, visit urologycentersalabama.com, schedule an appointment with one of their many urologists today. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus prime beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop. Rare quality, well-done service. Maybe you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, X, LinkedIn, or TikTok while we're changing the game yet again. Tyler's Telegrams has been developed exclusively for you. Hi, this is the lovable boy you know as Tyler the Intern. I'm a businessman now. I will come directly to your door and tell you every time a new piece of TNR content drops. For the low, low price of $740,000, you can be notified by me, one of the biggest stars of the next round, about that thing you missed. Sure. The rest of those social media services are free, but so is radio, and we all know how well that's trending. Tyler's Telegrams is currently operating exclusively in Bibb County. Other social media platforms are available everywhere. It's that time of year again. The Legacy Swap and Drop promotion is back. It's bigger than ever. Swap your current auto loan or RV loan to Legacy and drop your interest rate and monthly payment. Don't miss out on this opportunity to save big with our friends at Legacy Credit Union. Not a member yet? That's okay. You too can save by becoming a member today. Head over to SwapAndDrop.com. Apply in minutes. That's SwapAndDrop.com. Or visit one of their nine Greater Birmingham area branches. Limited time offer. Terms and conditions may apply. See Credit Union for details. Federally insured by the NCU. Back with you on the next round. Um, I want to show you pictures of one of Brown's least favorite stadiums about to get remade in college football. One of my least favorite stadiums. If I say least favorite stadium in your book. Uh, Southeastern Conference, it's uh, Vanderbilt, obviously, but overall. They are getting so, remade, but that's yeah, not who it yeah, is. Yeah, no, no, they are <laughs> doing it. has been going on for years. Yeah, I know. That's like, um, uh, it's like uh, 65 coming back from the beach, right? <laughs> so this is one I have watched on TV that I have complained I about enough. What, think about it, and we'll bring it back a little bit later on. Okay. Okay, try to figure out which one it is. We'll bring it back a little bit later on. Uh, Precision Sports bringing you uh, – our college football update here, and uh, one former player, Bo Nix, is uh, getting rave reviews today. Precision Sports will get you back in the game. Precision Sports is the um, the place you go where if you tweak your back, you know, trying to be younger than you think you are in a dunk contest on a nine-foot goal out in your driveway, or maybe you take pickleball just a little more serious than everybody else on the pickleball and you stretch out that back or pull a hammy or whatever, they just get you back at it at Precision Sports uh, Medicine. There's the website, precisionsportsortho.com slash 2024, precisionsportsortho.com slash 2024, 205-512-3885. Great locations around town. But what they do, um, and listen, LT and I both have been by there. They're just so good at at your uh, customer service and uh, and they get you um, back to work, which when you get to be our age, it's not about rehabbing, getting back in the game, right, LT? It's about being able to still to go, to, to go to work yeah. and stuff. And they do that with our friends at Precision Sports. Again, all you have to do, 205-512-3885, precisionsportsortho.com, slash 2024, orthopedic care, better uh, together. Can I throw one stat at you guys about the tournament? Can that, I do the Bo yeah. Nix thing yeah, yeah, first? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just teased. Bo Nix. Mel Kuyper Jr., the fifth quarterback in the first round, 12th overall today, Mel Kuyper Jr. to the Denver Broncos. Oh. And Sean Payton, Mel Kuyper saying he is hearing Sean Payton sees a little Drew Brees in Bo Nix. Um, I would love for him to go off the board at 12. That means he never gets to the Rams at 18. But I was watching Kuyper. He was one of the regulars on Get Up this morning. And he was talking about Caleb Williams since the Notre Dame game that there is a thought that maybe Jaden Daniels would jump Caleb Williams, which to me, I don't think the Bears can take that chance again. It's almost like you gave up Justin Fields to get Caleb Williams, and if you pass on Caleb Williams to take Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams ends up better, 
it's kind of a, a hit bag. But I, I would be surprised if you get that many quarterbacks going to the top twelve. Yeah, but if you, but if you take Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels is better, you're in the same situation. If you take Jaden Daniels and Caleb's better, you're in the same situation. What if Drake May is? I don't think so. But what if Drake May is better than all of them, and you're taking the wrong one there? Uh, it's just that's just. That's just the position you're in when you're drafting quarterbacks. Well, how good do you guys feel about these quarterbacks? Because I was thinking about it this morning. There are, as much as I love Matt Stafford, I think he's got another year or two left. If I could get one of these two quarterbacks, I would be okay with Stafford shutting it down today. I feel that good about two quarterbacks in this draft. I, I don't trust any quarterback. I don't care how good they are in college football. The NFL can't evaluate them, so why do I think I can? So it's all a crapshoot to me. So yeah. I really don't trust any you, of them. You love Jaden Daniels. Yeah, so you I, would take him right now. Yeah. You said you would have taken Justin Fields, especially if, oh, yeah, I especially for a six-round draft. Well, pick. and I thought they, they, they do it the way that the, the Steelers are doing it. Like, let Fields come in and learn under a guy that's won a Super Bowl, and I guess that's the way the Steelers are doing it. I think it should be an open competition. I think there's a little bit of you that likes J.J. McCarthy. I do like J.J., but I, I think the ones that I would feel really good about are Caleb and Jaden. And I actually feel maybe a little bit better about Jaden Daniels, too. Than Caleb. Yeah, he just seems like, God, I hate to say this. He did I don't it against know. better competition. You cannot well, argue that. I was just going to say he seems like a better competitor. I hate to say that because I really don't know anything about Caleb Williams yeah. outside of just watching him. Um, Daniel, people are sleeping on Drake May. He is taking a draft, uh, a public perception hit, hit that Joel Klatt said yesterday on his podcast uh, is, is from misinformed people, that he loves Drake May's game and may end up being well, the best quarterback in this draft. I think I'm haunted by the failures the failures of other North Carolina quarterbacks. Mitch Trubisky, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Is I feel like I, I think a lot of people are scared Drake May is Mitch Trubisky 2.0, which is unfair to Drake May because all they have done is play at the same school. Why would you think he's Mitch Trubisky? just because both of them played. Yeah, and I Sam mean, I mean, Howell's been better than yeah. Trubisky. Yeah, why would you fear that just because they both played in North Carolina? I was going to ask you guys about if you're a Broncos fan, is there part of you, I am not comparing these two quarterbacks as far as their success level. Just understand what I'm saying here when I make this comparison, okay? Is there part of you that fears you're getting Tim Tebow 2.0? With Bo Nix. With Bo Nix, if I'm a Denver fan. The reason I ask that, Bo Nix was nowhere near as successful as Tim Tebow. I get that, and they're different quarterbacks. I get that. But it is the quarterback that I think is just a really good college quarterback, and I don't know if his game translates to the NFL. That's who Tim Tebow was. Yeah, I, obviously different players. I see what you're saying, and then I think that's been the, the, the biggest knock on Bo Nix is can he throw into those tight windows? I don't believe he's going to be able to consistently, but we'll see. I'll tell you what, if Sean Payton does roll the dice and takes him 12 overall – and it doesn't work out. I've always said Sean Payton's success, those two players are handcuffed together. Sean Payton, or that coach and that player, and Drew Brees. I think it was a great system for Brees, but I think Sean pa or Drew Brees' play made Sean Payton the coach he was. Yeah, it's the uh, quick processing that Kuyper says that brings that comparison. Bo Nix and Drew Brees, the ability to quickly process something and get the ball out quickly. Draft uh, comes up at the end of April, a little over a month from now. Should be a little bit of fun counting down to that. LT wants to bring up something here about the NCAA tournament. We continue with Andy Kennedy one hour from now before UAB heads with the rest of Alabama's basketball programs, <laughs> minus Sanford, to Spokane, Washington. Yeah, I was just looking at facts on the tournament, and this is pretty amazing because it's very relevant, us talking about it here in the SEC. But since 2016, None of the 17 SEC teams to earn a top four seed have reached the final four. So think about that. The only two SEC teams to advance to the final four since 16 were number five Auburn in 2019 and number seven South Carolina under Frank Martin in 2017. Last SEC team to reach the title game was eight seeded Kentucky in 2014. Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Auburn, all top four seeds this year. I saw there, there's obviously been discussion about expanding the tournament. There has been this... You know, not I don't think from Sankey or Petiti. I've not seen either one of them say this, but there's been this speculation about the Big Ten and the SEC saying we'll just lead our own tournament one day. We'll break away from the NCAA and lead our own tournament. And I saw somebody respond and say, if it's the SEC and the Big Ten, congrats, you'll have exactly zero of the last ten national champions. No, oh, yeah. I mean, when you start to think about it, I mean, those are the top conferences, but, but they don't win the college basketball yeah, national championship. I mean, Big Ten, it's been 24 years. It's been 27 years for the Pac-12, 
And by the way, last opportunity this year. Yep. Yeah. By the way, if you saw on social media, the Pac-12 network sign off from the Pac-12 basketball tournament. So that was their last thing? No, they're going to broadcast. Last I was, thing anybody cares about. I was reading this. They're going to broadcast uh, all the spring games. Okay. Uh, all 12 of them, even the departing schools. Yeah. Not just the two that are staying. They got money to spend. Yeah, they, yeah. they squeeze it yeah. every it. drop. And uh, but it was sad. Uh, the broadcast crew on the set was leave like, the equipment there. Don't even bring it. With they you. were like, um, "What? What? Uh, what are your thoughts at this moment as we sign off for the last time on the Pac-12 Network? I guess it was the basketball yeah. crew, and there were tears. And they were like, really? you know, when we took this job, we thought we'd do this one for this would be it for the rest of our careers. We'd be Pac-12 network people for the rest of our lives, and now it's over. I did see. And boy, that burned pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. I did see on social media one of the one of the last vestiges of the Pac-12 network done away was the media complaining that in the Pac-12 media hotel for the Pac-12 tournament, they could not get the Pac-12 network. That, that, that's the definition of that network. Uh, always a good tweet right there. All right, when we come back, we will uh, continue the conversation on all the NCAA tournament. Uh, I'd love to hear from everyone, including you in the chat room, about just a first-round upset. You don't have to be locked into it here uh, in your bracket. We don't lock our brackets in now for 24 hours from right now. Our brackets will be locked. So we can still change these. So you're not tied to this um, this upset that you're going to give me, Lance or Brownie or Rockstar or anyone else, or you in the chat room. You can still change this. But right now, 24 hours from locking your bracket in. Give me an upset that you're thinking about in the first round that may surprise some people. Show being brought to you by Michelson Laser Vision. Yeah, 205-969-8100. That is a number that I called more than two decades ago. I had the 2200 vision. I was legally blind without the aid of contacts after the procedure, which only took 12 minutes. For both eyes, 2015 vision better than 2020. Make the phone call today, 205-969-8100. Ask for Amy Teller the next round sent you. Ask about the pre-inflation pricing. Dr. Mark Michelson, Dr. Jen Michelson, best in the business. For more information, 205-969-8100 or michelsonlaservision.com. Call the next round now at 205-734-0923. This hour of the next round is presented by the Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Now featuring seven days of giveaways with your chance to win a share of up to $125,000. The more you visit the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, the more chances you have to win you got to look your best to play your best. And our friends at Bandwagon can help your team find the perfect uniforms for that upcoming season. Bandwagon is with you every step of the way, from developing your team logo design to choosing from their multitude of samples. You name the sport, they can make it happen. To get your uniform journey started, you can shoot them a message on any social media platform or check out their website, bandwagonsports.com. That's bandwagonsports.com. Next round, listeners, it's time to jump on the bandwagon. There are so many things I love about walk-ons. Authentic, mouth-watering Louisiana cuisine prepared fresh daily from scratch. A great beer selection and TVs everywhere to watch the big game every day of the week. And, of course, they've got two great locations on Highway 280 and 119 and at Hoover near the Hoover Met. Walk-ons is also a great place for happy hour. Two to six Monday through Friday with $5 moonshine swirls, $5 house pours, and half-price appetizers. And it's an easy take-home experience for the family as well. Highway 280 and Hoover with walk-ons. Did you know that colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in America and that it affects men and women equally? If you're older than 45, Rump Shaker encourages you to talk to your doctor about screening options that are available. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and beatable, but early detection is the key. For more information, please visit us. Go to rumpshakerinc.org. Also, 6th Annual Rump Shaker 5K coming up Saturday, March 23rd at Regents Field. You can register online, rumpshakerinc.org. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Gutter Cap. Gutter Cap's that patented aluminum cover system that fits over most existing gutters to keep out debris and eliminate that gutter cleaning. It's back with a lifetime warranty, almost 20 year service record right here in Birmingham. Stay off that dangerous ladder forever. 45% off the retail price now if you call guttercapbirmingham.com. Call my good friend Chris Stewart now, 205 823 2212. Cap it, don't snap it, it's Gutter Cap. Hey, there's nothing worse than waking up to a plumbing problem. Don't get caught in a flooded house. Call the guys at Hemphill Services. Adam, Chad, and the team at Hemphill are the only ones I trust to fix it and fix it right the first time. Hemphill Services does it right and always at a fair price. For all of your plumbing, cooling, and heating needs, 
Trust the name that Birmingham has trusted since 1954. That is Hemp Hill Services. Call now, 205-229-2090. That's 205-229-2090. Start your day online with our website, nextroundlive.com, for the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. It's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. All right, final hour of the show. UAB head coach Andy Kennedy coming up at 1145 today. We've already talked to Stephen Pearl. It's getaway day for Bama, Auburn, and UAB out to Spokane, Washington. Uh, they'll do their own private practices Wednesday. They'll do their public practices Thursday and meet the media out there in Spokane and then play their games on Fridays. Uh, we're at Odie's on Thursday, 4 to 6, uh, with our specialty show if you want to watch as you watch the games with us. Or you can just come hang out with us and drink and eat at Odie's on Thursday. And on Friday, we're at walk ons That's Odie's in Homewood. I keep meeting, there's so many locations now. Odie's in Homewood, 4 to 6. And then we're at Walk-On's Greystone Friday, 2-4. to four. Same situation. We'll be there watching UAB and Auburn play their afternoon games. We'll have a specialty show uh, there, 2-4. to four, And you can watch online and uh, as you watch the games with us. And the Bracket Challenge is ongoing. Uh, powered by our friends at MyBookie. And also brought to you by our friends at Champies, who bring you this hour. You have uh, plenty of time still to jump in there. Some of you uh, secured your spot. Still some room available if you want to jump in and play the next round live bracket challenge powered by MyBookie, mybookie.ag. They're online and brought to you by our friends at Champies Chicken on Highway 119 in Alabaster. Uh, nextroundlive.com, nextroundlive.com. And uh, for Champies Chicken, the, which always brings you this hour, Highway 119 in Alabaster, great food to watch the games with. Uh, in fact, we'll have some up here on Thursday. Uh, during our show, as the tournament tips off, Sterling will bring everything you see in that picture right there. He'll bring us some hand-cut chicken fingers, some fried chicken, some Mississippi Delta recipe tamales. Uh, we'll provide the cold beer. It'll be a good time with our friends at Champy's Chicken, Sterling, right there on Highway 119 in Alabaster. Before we get back to the basketball, Brownie, do you have your final answer on the stadium so, that you uh, oftentimes say, I hate that stadium? So Vanderbilt, but Vanderbilt, you said, is not it. I also am not a fan of what used to be the Carrier Dome, now the JMA Wireless Dome. That is primarily because the camera angles are too low. They're built for basketball, not for football. Yep. And it makes it a bad watching experience. That is also true of the stadium at Missouri, which is, I think, what you're talking about. I hate Missouri Stadium. Lance talks about people sitting on rocks like they're a snake. <laughs> I do not like the camera angles in that stadium either, and I hate the font they use for their numbers on the field. So oh, I do Missouri, hate that. I do Missouri hate that. is my answer. Missouri is your final answer. It yes. does start with an M, but you've always hated the Liberty Bowl, Brown. Uh, I was going to say that, but I, I didn't know you were going to go to the American for me. I thought but, that was going to be group uh, Power 5. Well, they also play an SEC Bowl game there, the Liberty Bowl, and yep. they are refurbishing it. This is what it's going to look like. They're basically tearing out the press old press box and a bunch of seats on that side of the stadium putting in sky boxes, a new press box, a fan zone, and some specialty seating to I mean, sort of modernize it and give it a better look. I guess those aren't obstructed view seats. They don't appear to be from the way it is drawn. They, so. they are not. And uh, go back to that first one, uh, for sure, if you can. There you go. A uh, nice sunset in Memphis, by the way, flat. You can see all the way to backwoods, Arkansas. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you, you're losing some capacity, though. Well, I mean, I don't think that's... Yeah. I mean, I think that's needed. I, Memphis does not sell that place out, and nor does the bowl game that I've seen. I've yeah. only had one person tell me that that is a good that's place to current go to game. right now, yeah. correct? One that's, person has told you that, Lance. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know a lot of people are, are loyal to their hometown. Uh, I'm oh, not a big fan of Memphis, but yeah. it's, it's Verno. Yeah. Chris Vernon swears, oh, it's a good atmosphere, it's a good venue. That's current, and that's what it's going to look like. So it will look better. Never been a big fan. And they yeah. built it in that weird era where you did weird things like your Tampa Bay Buccaneers used to play in a stadium that was shaped like that. The, the, sombrero. the sombrero. Yeah. 
And they built it in that weird era where architecturally you tried to get cute with stuff like that. And I don't, I've never liked the design of it either. Yeah. I think the thought of it was let's maximize sideline seating and minimize end zone seating is the reason they did that back in the day. I would agree with that, uh, that thought there. Yeah, so it makes it just look weird. That old press box built in whenever it was built in the 50s will come down and they'll take out a lot of those seats and make it a little bit better there for Memphis in the atmosphere. So we'll see how it all works out there uh, in Memphis. All right, um, back to uh, basketball, and we'll talk a little upsets here. Um, Brownie, you start us off here on the upset. Well, part. <clears throat> do I need to give you one that I have actually picked, or do I mean, I guess that's the only way I could do that, no, right? No, no, no. I mean, you can change anything you want. I, I know. I tell you what. What? Before you give me your upset, I'll okay. let you still think about this. Uh, some people would say this is um, – <laughs> I don't know, it's not out of line. It's just what you do as a fan. But Everett German is uh, the voice of the College of Charleston uh, basketball program. He went on, went on Twitter last night, and uh, he sent this tweet out. Dear Auburn Nation. Now, remember, who does Charleston play? Uh, they play Alabama, Jim. They play but they're, Alabama. they're in the same arena that Auburn will be in. Everett's the voice of Charleston. Dear Auburn Nation, it just means more when Alabama loses. We look forward to your support out in Spokane as we try to roll the tide. Sincerely, hashtag our city. That's funny. At Auburn Basketball, at Marlene Naver. Yep. And Marlene handles the media for Bruce Pearl and such. Um, Marlene retweeted a handshake agreement there on, on the tweet. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Marlene came to Auburn from Charleston. From Charleston, yeah. really? Yeah, so I think that's so. A, yeah. That's the combination there. Uh, so craziness that, uh, but I joked with little T the atmosphere in the stadium in Spokane, because you got, you got a UAB in the first game, Auburn in the second game, Alabama in the third game. Most of the atmosphere will come from the other fan bases. Uh, you'll have one fan base cheering for their team and the other rival fan base cheering against yeah. the other hometown team. So it'll be Auburn fans cheering for Auburn in that, uh, late afternoon game and Alabama fans cheering for Yale uh, in that one. And then it'll flip around in the night game. It'll be Alabama fans cheering for Alabama and Auburn fans cheering. And then who knows what UAB fans will do. Yeah, I think they cheer against Alabama and cheer for Yale uh, because the easier path for them to beat Yale than it is to beat Auburn. Always always Uh, do that. But if you've ever been in an NCAA arena, it is a fun atmosphere in these first two rounds. And a lot of you got to experience it in Auburn. I've been to some other places too, though. In Birmingham? I mean, last year? Yeah, Yeah. I'm sorry. It was... Against Iowa, I think they thought they were in Auburn. Yeah. Uh, but yes, in Birmingham, my apologies. Um, but you guys have experienced this too. What happens is when the higher seated team gets behind, the whole arena turns on them. That's right. Like they might just be interested <laughs> observers until they get down and they start thinking, oh. my bracket gets easier with this loss. The light yep. at the end of the tunnel. That's right. If and, this goes on, we can yep. get to Sweet 16. And the whole arena turns against the best seated team. That, oh, that always I, I remember when Austin Crochier in 97 rolled in here with Providence and they beat. In my opinion, one of the best teams to never win a national championship in the 97 Kansas Jayhawks. And I, everybody in that arena that wasn't a Kansas fan was a Providence fan. And the same one year Austin P came here, the Governors. Beat Mississippi State? They beat somebody, and I think they made a run towards the Sweet 16, but the entire crowd was, let's go, Pete. Let's oh, go, yeah, Pete. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it was uh and that yeah, and that's what happens. Now it's it, it happened last year, as we mentioned, when Houston started to make their run against Auburn, there were a lot of Alabama fans in the arena because the late slate was Alabama Maryland and all the Alabama fans jumped on Houston. Like there was a sliver of Houston fans, but as Houston started that second half run, you just heard the whole arena start get behind Houston. It was yeah. all the Alabama fans. And of course, Kevin Kelvin Sampson he brought that up in post game. Yeah. Like we appreciate yeah. uh, the Alabama well, fans a, sticking around to try to help it, us out. It was a road game for us <laughs> until we took the lead, and the Alabama fans got in. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's what's going to happen up in Spokane. It's going to be really interesting. And there's just not a team up there, I think, guys, that's going to sell a ton of tickets. No, the, the ticket, the, the the ticket for a session is uh, fifteen dollars right now. Like if you told me. That, that's that's believable. I mean, I look, I don't want to doubt either one of these fan bases or any of these fan bases, but you heard Stephen Pearl talking about round trip tickets to $1,000, and if I'm one of these fan bases, I don't want to go see my team lose up there. I would rather wait and if they advance to the next round. Well, Brown, you, Brown should be the travel agent for a lot of fans. Brown found his tickets well, for 649 yesterday. Yeah, that's out of Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, Alaska Airlines. Right, that, that is a pain in the ass. Oh, it's yeah. not that bad. I, no, we've done it before. 
Oh, I've done it. It's terrible. It's yeah. bad on coming back. It's, it's bad terrible. coming home. It's all right going there because oh, you're yeah. all excited about the trip. You're okay. But when you get home and then you get that two hour drive in front and of you. And then you get a delay. I mean, the oh, last yeah. time I flew out of Atlanta, I had a delay coming back. Didn't get back till like midnight. Oh, but, last, but for you Auburn, Alabama, UAB fans, uh, Brown's hack there. Just go to just make the uh, one hour and 40 minute drive over to the uh, the parking in Atlanta airport and jump on the 649 flight. I, Not I, 6 o'clock, but yeah. $649 if flight. If that's still what it was, it was Alaska Airlines round trip. Now, you have to fly through Seattle, but I, you're not going to fly straight to Spokane. Yeah. I got news for you. Why not? Why I, not? I had a buddy of mine that used to live up there, and I ran into him the other day after the announcement. Uh, I guess that was Monday I ran into him. And he said, when you're talking about Spokane on your show, I'll give you a little insight. I said, well, he said, uh, you ever been to Childersburg? I said, yeah. He goes, imagine a 12-story building in Childersburg. Yeah. That's what I can. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and, and, a, and a small university called Gonzaga. Yeah, yes. doesn't John Stockton's parents still own a bar in Spokane? Maybe so. I'm I think sure. they do. But I was going to say, if you told me that Auburn had the most fans at this region, I'd believe it. Because St. Mary's just is not a huge fan no, base. And that's no. the that's the And closest. what's the undergrad at St. Mary's? I'm going to say yeah. four or 5,000. I mean, that's what I'm saying. St. Mary's gets like five grand for a home game. Well, if you news, told me Auburn's got the most fans, I'd say, yeah, that, I, I could see that. And the good news for Alabama, if they get St. Mary's, if there are locals there that are Gonzaga fans that are just going because it's the NCAA tournament, they hate St. Mary's. Oh, yeah. So Gonzaga will be cheering for yeah. whoever wins the Alabama-Charleston game yep. to beat St. Mary's because that's their big rival. Well, and you ask for an upset, I don't think Alabama's got to worry about St. Mary's. I think Grand Canyon gets them. Do you? So that's really? my twelve five. Yeah, I'll go and tell you it's in my bracket. Twelve five. I think Grand Canyon, which I think is a more interesting matchup for Alabama because they play Alabama style. Um, so as it relates to Alabama, I think they would probably rather Grand Canyon than St. Mary's, but I think that's a 12-5 right there. Well, I think Grand Canyon I, I, There gets was them. two I was going to go with. And by the way, the uh, the 12 over the 5, that is trending downward. In 30 of the first or 27 of the first 30 tournaments, we had a 12 that would beat a 5. But it's only happened in three of the last eight. So it, it is going the other way. We had two fives reach a Final Four last year. It seems like we're getting more, what is it, four 13s and, and two 15s three, and, and one 16s. Yeah. yeah. And three 14s now. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, where was it? Um, I'll come across it in a second. But do you know the head coach is at Grand Canyon? Yeah. It's uh, Bryce Drew. Yeah. Bryce Drew. And they've beat this year San Diego State, San Francisco, and they took South Carolina to the wire. I like that lazy. play. You like it, dude? I do, yeah. Yeah, lazy. And I agree uh, with uh, Forster. I mean, I, I think Gonzaga probably wins, but if I'm trying to just draw one out a double digit here, McNeese, 11 wins last year. We talked about Will Wade earlier to 30 wins this year. They have got a point guard that's quick as a hiccup. Uh, is that a wimp yeah. reference? Yeah. <laughs> and they won their conference tournament by an average of 18 points per game. They are playing, the Cowboys are playing great basketball right now. That is a tough draw for Gonzaga. Yep. Uh, obviously, uh, is 11 over 6, is that big enough upset? I mean, it may as well be, yeah. I mean, uh, we did 12-5. It's not that big a difference. I'll take Oregon over South Carolina. <laughs> Just because they're so lazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure they get out of bed. Uh, but I'll take Oregon over South Carolina as mine. Brown's going to give you some uh, in the chat room there, but LT's going to tell us about Woodhouse while Brown gives some of yours over in that chat room. Uh, Woodhouse Day Spa, just a great place to go. And look, they've got an incredible March Madness special going right now. And the thought process there is you want to go to Sports Bar, you want to watch all the NCAA action, send the wife or girlfriend to the Woodhouse Day Spa. Beautiful location, conveniently right there at the Summit Shopping Centers. You can choose from a menu of over 70 options including massages body treatment skin care waxing nail services you can order that special person gift online 24 7 at birmingham.woodhousespas.com or just get in see Stuart and that great staff and tell them the next round sit you uh brandon says rick barnes gonna rick barnes i don't know that he means in the first round that would be a 15-2 upset but rick does not have the best record in uh in this tournament there's no doubt about that well st peter's made a run a few years ago didn't they two years ago elite yeah. eight yeah well that's when they beat kentucky was that in the first round it was a 215 right yeah when they beat kentucky yeah um, Daniel disagrees with me. St. Mary's defense is too good. Nicholas says St. Mary's is a physical team. Yeah. Um, they are a physical team. They're a good defensive team. They're, they're the best defensive team yeah. in that little pod right there. There's yeah. no doubt about Trust it. Trust me, if Alabama is fortunate to beat Charleston, they are really hoping to see Grand Canyon and not No, uh, that's St. what I'm Mary's. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do think Grand would... Canyon is a better matchup for Alabama yeah. than St. Uh, maybe. Mary's. Maybe. I mean, he, he, this Grand Canyon team is really good, though, with 29 wins. And, again, San Diego State's a physical team. They beat San Diego State earlier this year. JP says he's got three 12s winning this year. Mm. Three 12s. Right, come on. Upsets so, don't happen a lot in this tournament. 
He says jokingly. Uh, Nicholas says Gonzaga's just not the same team. Uh, Daniel disagrees with McNeese State because he says their strength of schedules in the 330s when you start talking about um, how well, about well, their record anyway. McNeese has no size. Yeah. And that is a problem. I mean, you're big for McNeese is 6'6". Six, six. Uh, Paul likes Moorhead over Illinois. Boy, the Illinois team I watched with Terrence Shannon this past week uh, just run through the Big Ten tournament. That's a good, good. And Brad Underwood, good coach. Imagine, oh, he's if, an excellent coach, imagine yeah. if Moorhead still had Janai. Isn't that where Janai Broom came from? Was Moorhead State? Yeah. I think it was. Isn't that crazy that he started his career so, there? I mean, that's the unfortunate thing. Like, I don't know how many more of these upsets you're. I mean, we're going to get upsets, but are we going to get the upsets to the level we used to get? Because. Once these guys have a good year, they're bouncing. Yeah. Uh, Nick has Sanford over Kansas. You're saying that that has, is that a popular local trend or you're seeing that like no, outside of national. Birmingham? Yeah. yeah, I've seen national. They, they had. Um, and I think it's more an, an indictment on where Kansas is right now as a team. The Field of 68 podcast had some guy on, an expert on, who uh, does some wagering. I forget his okay. name. I called it mid interview, but he was bringing up how sometimes unique styles of offenses really cause problems in uh, first round games and he referenced two others and then his third one he used the phrase buckyball wow. and and then he, he said Sanford and buckyball could cause Kansas some problems if uh, Kansas is not focused and they're a little cold shooting and if you had to describe Bucky Ball, what would Bucky Ball be to well, you guys? Well, Bucky Sorry. Ball, I mean, they're going to take a lot of threes. They're going to pressure you as on, on every made basket if they can. He he subs a lot because that's the style of play. I mean, well, if, and the, the, if a team's not deep and if they're banged up, Lance, depth is an issue for them. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, yeah. they share the basketball. The ball movement is incredible. They get good shot selections, and, and they don't Kansas, rely on just one guy. And Kansas is not deep. They may have a, one of the elite starting fives, but that's been the knock on this Jayhawk team all year is they're not deep. Yeah, like I would love to know internally McCullers and Dickinson and how healthy they are. If they're 90-plus percent healthy, and one of the reasons they sat out of the Big 12 tournament, and one of the reasons it seemed like Bill Self said, let's tap out early and get beat by Cincinnati by 20 points. But if I knew those guys were 90-plus, Kansas can make a deep run. If they're not, they can easily get upset by Sanford in the first round. Well, I I will say this to you. Their assist to turnover nationally, Kansas is 15th. So that's a good sign for them playing Bucky Ball. Teams that turn the ball over a lot, that's who struggles against a Bucky McMillan Team, where they don't match up, obviously, is if Dickinson is playing anywhere close to his normal level, Achora Achora is the only length that Sanford has. And he's 6'9 with a right. good wingspan. But not the same wingspan no. as Yaks for UAB. No, and not Hunter I think Dickinson. Six, nine, yeah, and, yeah. Not, and not Hunter Dickinson. And, and you know, you get any fouls on Achora Achora, they just don't have any length to run at Kansas in that situation. So then you better be, you better be knocking down your outside shots. Yeah, uh, and I would tell you these playing games tonight and then tomorrow night. Um, Colorado State, I think it's good enough to win their first game with Texas. And this Colorado team, when they play Boise tomorrow night, the Buffs, can, they can score. They can put up some points. Now, they play defense sometimes like Alabama, and they score sometimes like Alabama. Yeah, look, they were favored in the Pac-12 championship game and Oregon upset them. And, yeah, Colorado, Tad, Tad Bull is a really good coach. So Colorado, if they were able to survive Boise State – could be a tricky matchup for Florida. Um, that's who they would get if they win tomorrow night with Florida having to readjust their rotation and stuff. A little bracket conversation for you there. You still have a chance to jump into the bracket challenge. It is powered by our friends at My Bookie and presented as well by our friends at Champions Chicken on Highway 119 in Alabaster. A jump in here, but My Bookie bringing you this, mybookie.ag for all the plays. You can enjoy the great fun of having a little something. Uh, in the bracket challenge and a little something at mybookie.ag on the games that start tonight for the play-in, but your bracket actually starts on Thursday, and we look forward to that. Go be a part of it and see if you can get bragging rights and some great prizes there for you as well. Nextroundlive.com is the website, or there are links all over the place. And, Brownie, are we still doing until what time uh, the in the Next yeah. Round store? Yeah, so until midnight, I guess 11.59 Wednesday, technically, uh, until the clock swips over, uh, flips over. We've got Merch Madness. I did not know I was going to be the model for Merch Madness, but there you go. Merch oh Madness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> if a 16 or a The 50, logo. I know, I have the logo. It's like the NBA, Lance. Uh, a uh, 16 or a 15 beats a one or a two. 
a, listen to me now, a 16 beats a one or a 15 beats a two, anything you purchase between now and 11.59 Wednesday will refund your money. Next round dot store, next round dot store. There is no order minimum required. Anything there in the store, and if a 16 upsets a 1 or a 15 upsets a 2, we refund your money with Merch Madness at Next Round Dot Store. Uh, two points here. Uh, are the leggings available that you're wearing there? So yeah. those the are store. actually, those were long pants, but it was so hot when we started playing, I had to pull them up around my knees. So. Right, hey, if right. If you're, if you're you on the fence. You got that off of Jen Brown's rack. Not knickers. I'm going to give you another stat if you're on the fence about Merch Madness, and you don't think we're all in on this. A 15 seed has won a first round game in three consecutive tournaments now, and all three have gone to the Sweet 16. Princeton last year, St. Peter's the year before, and Oral Roberts the year before that. So it's happened three consecutive years. Your gear is free. Look like. I mean, that's that's a stat. Yeah, those don't lie. That's that, a stat. That's a stat. It is a stat, Jimmy yeah. D. Show brought to you by JohnsonRVCenter.com. We're going to tell you about fun we're having at Talladega with Johnson RV when we get out into April. But JohnsonRVCenter.com. Yeah, we're heading over to Talladega today. They're going to be with us at Talladega coming up around the race. We're going to have some fun with that. But you can always get a great price at Johnston RV Center. In fact, they've adjusted all of their pricing, and they're so confident that the pricing is the best you can find anywhere. They're giving you a nationwide price match guarantee on comparable models nationwide you bring it to them and they'll beat the price at johnston rv center i-65 exit 304 in coleman 334 indicator and always online johnstonrvcenter.com those of you who have served in the military or currently serving you've made america the united states the greatest country in the universe they say thank you with an extra discount for you i-65 exit 304 in coleman 334 indicator always online johnstonrvcenter.com everything alabama all the time Subscribe and set alerts at Roll Tide Pods on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Ready to swap from your current auto or RV loan provider and drop your interest rate? Now is your chance. With Legacy Credit Union's annual swap and drop promotion, you can swap your current loan and save with Legacy in minutes. Whether you're a member or a potential member, Legacy Credit Union is here to help you drive into savings. Go online to swapanddrop.com or visit one of their nine locations to take advantage of this incredible offer. Limited time offer terms and conditions may apply. See Credit Union for details. Federally insured by the NCUA. Twin Peaks is the best in the game. Here, you're in the red zone for every college rivalry and divisional matchup all season long. On game day, you never have to decide which teams to watch, only what combination of bites, burgers, wings, and more to order. Plus, where else are your favorite draft beers always poured at a frozen 29 degrees? Only at Twin Peaks, the number one sports bar. Stick around after the sun sets. Twin Peaks is open really late. Wind down with bourbon and late night bites. Only at Twin Peaks. Fire damage to your home or business is something you never want to consider. Ryan Brown here from the next round. But in the horrible event it happens, Dry Tech is here to help. They respond quickly and will reply to you within 20 minutes when you call 205-637-0143. They're working for you, the customer, not the insurance company. They've got five crews ready to go 24-7. Don't call the insurance company first. Call Dry Tech. Just remember this website, mydrytech.com. That is mydrytech.com. You gotta look your best to play your best. And our friends at Bandwagon can help your team find the perfect uniforms for that upcoming season. Bandwagon is with you every step of the way, from developing your team logo design to choosing from their multitude of samples. You name the sport, they can make it happen. To get your uniform journey started, you can shoot them a message on any social media platform or check out their website, bandwagonsports.com. That's bandwagonsports.com. Next round listeners, it's time to jump on the bandwagon. It's time to pull the trigger on the Next Round merch that you've been eyeing. We know there's a lot to choose from at nextround.store, so here's a few of our favorite picks. If you want to match LT and Brown, go with a TNR logo hoodie and throw in one of Dunaway's favorite hats. Any of them will do. The backroom's go-to is the classic logo t-shirt, while my personal favorite is the light blue TNR crew neck. All of these items can be found at nextround.store and are EG approved. Rest assured, your order will be packed with lots of love from us here at the next round. Head over to nextround.store to start filling up your cart.
Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about my friends at Michelson Laser Vision, located conveniently UAB Highlands. Almost 20 years ago, I went in for the procedure. Only took 12 minutes for both eyes. When I went in, I had 2200 vision. I was legally blind. Now I have 2015 vision, still 19 years later. Make the call today. Schedule a hassle-free consultation. 969-8100. Dr. Mark Michelson, Dr. Jen Michelson, Michelson Laser Vision. Make sure you tell them the next round sent you. 969-8100 or Michelson and laservision.com. Remember that old saying that um, half of uh, marriages in a divorce? In a divorce. That's yeah. not an old saying. Do you think that's true? Because I was reading today. Yeah. Oh, Actually, I think true. it's going down a little bit, though. Maybe no may a little yeah. bit. I think with the pandemic, with uh, financial uncertainty, this is kind of weird because they say that money is the number one problem that leads to divorce, but money is also the number one thing that keeps couples together because they can't afford a divorce. Marriage um, coming uh, out of the pandemic, uh, 5.1 persons per 1,000 were married. That is now up to 62 per 1,000 people. So it's more marriages are up and divorces are down. Four divorces per per 1,000 people down to 2.4 divorces per 1,000 people. Um, And they say now new relationships and marriages coming out of the pandemic more on companionship and friendship than on romance. Mm. That in the pandemic, Uh. people learned that friendship may be more important than romance. Well, I think in any long-term successful relationship, you've got to have that. Romance or friendship? No, I think you got to have both. I mean, you try to keep that fresh, but companionship is much more important than that initial spark um, that can probably make you do dumb things. Oh, yeah. That spark is going to, you know, get dimmer at some point if you don't have the friendship to lean on when that happens. Yeah, I do think there is a trend in younger people getting married, which is going to ultimately be a problem. Well, I hope not. Well, I just I think people jump into getting married at 22, 23, fresh out of college. I've seen much more of that recently than I've seen in the past. And getting married that early, look, you're, you're just going to change. And that's just going to be difficult to navigate that for 50, 60, 70 years. Uh, our friends with the Birmingham Squadron back in basketball tonight, 7 o'clock down at Legacy Arena. Uh, it's got two of the best players in the G League. In fact, the two highest scorers right now in Malcolm Hill of the Squadron and Mac McClung of the uh, Magic. They're playing each other for two games this week in Birmingham. So two of the best scorers in the G League. You'll see them in the NBA very soon. Tonight is Commander Mascot Plush Doll Giveaway Night. Limited supplies, so the first few people in the Legacy Arena tonight get there early and you can uh, get the Commander Plush doll. It's a -a one-of-a-kind kind of collector collectible there. BirminghamSquadron.com, BirminghamSquadron.com for tickets. $5 beer in the chill zone all the time, and uh, tickets at the gate as well, 7 o'clock. For the Legacy Arena Birmingham Squadron game tonight, also back at it Thursday, same two teams at 7 o'clock. 1931 on this day in history, the (laughs) state of Nevada legalized gambling trying to build up tourism and people moving to the state. And over a hundred, almost a hundred years later, we still can't get it in our archaic state. Yeah, 100 years later. That's amazing. Um, Alex Ovechkin scored two goals last night. He's only 51 goals away from breaking Wayne Gretzky's all-time goal record. Yeah, Alex Ovechkin's got the most goals in NHL history with one organization. All with uh, the Capitals? All with the Capitals. How about that? Because it was Edmonton Oilers to L.A. Kings yep. and that, for Gretzky. You know, and that was relatively uh, quick after that, you know, that dynasty the Oilers had. I think the year was 1988 was the year he got traded to the Kings. Yeah, because he played a long time with the Kings. Too, yeah, right? and they kind of, tr- they, yeah, they, they did. And they got to a Stanley Cup final against uh, Montreal in 1993 and ultimately lost that game. But they kind of changed their image. The Kings, a lot of people won't remember this, used to be Lakers colors. They were purple and gold. And then when Gretzky signed with them, they decided to go with the black and silver. Yeah, but at the time, the L.A. Raiders were in town, right? Well, I never knew that. I never knew that they were purple and gold. Oh, yeah, the old Marcel Dion days. I only remember them as black and silver. Yeah, back when I was actually an NHL fan. Two early baseball games uh, this week for that count. 
in the standings. The Dodgers, who are they playing in Seoul, South Korea? Uh, San Diego. San Diego is who they're playing. These two games count tomorrow morning and Thursday morning, and then uh, all of Major League Baseball starts a little bit later on. Mookie Betts at shortstop. And Blake Snell signs with the San Francisco Giants. Two years, $62 million. Those are the headlines we have not gotten to yet. It is time for Trash. Brought to you by our friends at Mortgage Right. Hit the big button, Rockstar. Around how many people would you say live on Earth? On Earth? Yeah. Eight million. <laughs> million or billion? Eight million. Yes. LT's yes. Trash is presented by Mortgage Right. Mortgages done the right way. She apparently has not seen Ariana Grande's followers. Yeah, clearly no. She's not what we like to call uh, book smart. Yeah, but this is the entire yeah. Earth we're talking about. Eight so million, that sounds about right. Eight. Yeah. And the ironic thing, she was interviewed in Tokyo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you a veteran looking for a VA loan? Mortgage Right has been advocating for veterans since their company began. As a veteran-owned, operated company committed to your well-being, they can help you find the best terms available, guide you through every step of the process. Visit their location, Highway 280. You can apply at mortgageright.com slash TNR. Call 205-815-9200, NMLS 2239, equal housing lender. So, we almost made another top 10 list. We being the state of Alabama. The city of Birmingham. Uh-huh. Alabama is actually, there is a city that cracked this top 10. New report has determined uh, that America's top 10 most overweight cities are located, this is going to shock you guys, entirely in the South. Uh, a lot of good food. Uh, see, see, uh, see, see. <laughs> Researchers from eat. Wallet Hub analyzed obesity statistics from all over the country. 42% of Americans struggle with their weight, along with additional factors like health, consciousness, and diet to create the findings, which determine the country's 100 most obese locales uh here are your top 10 most overweight cities by the way birmingham just missed the cut at 11. oh how about oh, that i think man. we can get there uh good time to tell you about my friends at weight of wellness <laughs> that is uh the body of choice down on the down on the gulf coast I, well, I would ask you of that body right there sec coach that most looks like that sam Pittman. uh you went sam Pittman. A, I was, a fatter um a fatter um ed I was, orgeron i was thinking brian kelly uh maybe but I think Pittman's probably a little bit bigger. Would you be upset if you feel like, holy hell, that is my body? Yeah, they're using <laughs> it for this graphic. Yeah, that is me. Yeah, yeah it's me. It's me. Sometimes. Oh, you're not that big, Donald. Sometimes. Way. Sometimes. I feel that way today, Brownie. But, you know, if you go by the BMI, like I was just looking this up. We're, I'm, we're all obese. Well, I'm 6'1", depending on when you weigh me, 210 to 215. That's about the weight I carry, right? 210 to 215. Which... I mean, obese for 6'1", is 227. Like, I'm not that far away from what they would consider obese. Yeah, I mean, I was close to 220 uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think I've probably lost 10, yeah. I think. But I'm probably around 210. So I'm considered obese. Do six feet and uh, 190. Uh, 191, you're overweight. Yeah, at six foot one ninety one. Of course, you're five eleven, you so did. you're even more. Yeah, really? Where did you get the six feet? I don't, I don't know why. I did when six we were feet over at the Alabama football complex, yeah, you're yeah. not gonna let that die. That, that no. chart was six Nick feet. Saban posted that chart <laughs> two inches because I think I was six four on that thing. That's media guy. Okay, here are your top ten cities: Chattanooga. These are the most overweight cities in the U.S. Number nine is Baton Rouge. Number eight, Lafayette. Louisiana, well represented, by the way. Uh, number seven, Memphis. Number six, Knoxville. Number five, Little Rock. Number four, Mobile. Number three, Shreveport. Number two, Jackson, Mississippi. And number one, I can honestly say I've never heard of this town, McAllen, Texas. Never been there. That's number one? McAllen, Texas. All right. McAllen, Texas. we got to find out what the go-to restaurant yeah, is. No there, but they got a good breakfast. Well, what if there's only 100 people that live there? Uh, they're all fat. Again. They're all you know, the, same the thing I've members. learned about these small Texas towns is they're massive. Like, I bet McAllen, I'm just guessing right now, McAllen has 200 and 20,000 people. Oh, I'll take the under on that all day long. Uh, I can get there in a four-hour and 23-minute flight from Birmingham. You can fly into McAllen? Well, I don't think you fly straight there. 143,000, as Rockstar said, yeah, from the 2021 yeah. census. I mean, that's, that's a big gonna, number, though. That's closer than I thought it was going to yeah. be, LT. Uh, when, what started as a call about a person walking with a shotgun in rural Stearns County ended unusually uh, on by, Tuesday. By the way, McAllen, right on the old, uh, what we like to call, southern border. Uh, uh, probably don't, don't want to stumble the wrong way. <laughs> border yeah. town there, yeah. So y- your point is that probably are 220,000 people living in town. <laughs> 143 <laughs> on the census. 
Deputy responded to a report of a suspicious person on a road. The caller described them as a, quote, elderly male carrying a shotgun and said when they drove by, the person tried to hide it. Now, the deputy found the man fitting the uh, witness's description walking along the road. When questioned, he told the deputy was just out for a walk, listening to music while using his walking stick. When the deputy confronted the man about trying to hide a shotgun, he came clean. Gentleman said he was using his stick to play air guitar. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Of course. Trying to saw one off. Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so bad. That little deaf lip in my head. Is Keanu? Yeah, man. It's Ted. Ted. Yeah, that Bill doesn't like, it doesn't look like Keanu. I know he looks, you know, that's I mean, he's aged well. 87? That's the promo shoot for the, uh, for the poster. Yeah. Their big adventure. Excellent adventure. Excellent adventure. Yeah, that poor, uh, poor other kid. No, dude, he's like. All the, what is his name? Lance, you know, he's all in that. Uh, all those documentaries about the dark web. He's all about it. Oh, really? Yeah, like he knows. He's a huge person like that. Like that's behind the scenes stuff. Like he did a whole document. I think he's a producer too. Okay. Um, more than half of Britain's dog owners feel they should be entitled to the same rights to take off as parents have. A new study reveals one in ten of every so-called dog parent wants to receive paternity leave. Paternity leave benefits similar to maternity or paternity leave. That would provide designated leave to care for their pooch, according to a study by Burns Pet Nutrition. Now, UK law states workers can take a, quote, reasonable amount of time off to deal with an emergency, such as caring for an ill child or mourning the death of a family uh, member. But dog owners are now demanding those same rights to look after their four-legged friend, which 67% claim to view as their own children. I'll never forget this. I know someone that had an uncle die and told their HR department, whoever handles their vacation or whatever at their corporation, hey, I'm going to need to be out of town. I apologize. You know, my uncle passed away. I'll only miss Thursday or Friday or whatever. And they said, oh, no, you get one week for bereavement leave. And she was like, so how far does that extend in my family? Like, I mean, who's got to die for me to get a one week bereavement leave? Wow. Yeah. I mean, and uncle? this was an uncle. Yeah. yeah. She was like, I mean, I am. I mean, I'm not going to. I'm not going to take advantage of it, but I would like to know for future deaths. Well, you know, I had a, uh, I had breakfast with a buddy slash client yesterday morning, and he was talking about they lost their 14-year-old dog recently. Oh. And he was like, it was my wife's. I think everybody's got that one dog in their life. Like, there's a lot of special dogs, in my opinion. But they have that one dog in their life that you'll never be able to replicate, and that was her dog. Yeah. And he said she was just crushed. And so... Like, I don't think, and you guys know how big I am on dogs. I don't think, you know, the the paternity leave, I think that's a little ridiculous. I think if somebody's pet dies, though. Yeah, you got to be a compassionate boss. People have got to be yeah. able to grieve how they grieve. Yeah, I mean, I some agree. people do think their their pets are that important. I mean, I do. I'll, I'll do four downs that day. So you don't have to worry yeah, about it. Yeah, you're going to have to. Yeah. Well, I hope it's a long time. I actually. I do, too. I don't think we'll be doing it. I hope, knock on wood, because I've got new pups. I mean, I'm, I'm going to get 20 plus years out of it. Long lasting. Yeah. Are you going to be doing a show in 20 years? I, I, you know, I don't know the future, Lance, but I'm uh, not going to be a dog. The Those over dog years. under question has plagued marriages and casual acquaintances alike for over 100 years. With both sides convinced they have the soundest reasoning for putting their toilet paper loose end out or loose end under. Uh, my wife is 100% loose end out. 100% like... That's, that's underneath. Makes no, 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 no. She's over the top. Over to the, the left. Top. Loose yeah. end out. Yeah. 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 That's the way it should be. That's yeah. the way my wife likes it, too. I prefer the other way. Why? I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm different. I mean, yeah. Why would you prefer the other I don't know. No, I, I, like, I like to bring my hand against the wall. I mean, the, the easiest way is on the left. Easier to you. Maybe not easier for me. I just like the fact that it's the contrary way of doing it is yeah. why you yeah, like yeah. it. Well, it's, it's actually closer to you. Yeah, it's easier because that's the way... You know, that's the way you guys do it. So that's easier. I mean, I'm telling you, I, I'm not I'm not launching rockets by reaching under the roll and pulling it. That yeah, way. but it doesn't like if you pull it from the left, it's always going to rip easily from the top underneath on the right. You've got to work it a little bit. You're going to extra step if yeah. you go on the right. Well, I don't like pulling from the way it is over the top because it does tear sometimes easier. Mm-hmm. I like a good pull. You got better tissue. Yeah, you made a better ply. Yeah, uh, two ply also, for you. For the argument's sake, like this is the patent illustration uh-huh. for the toilet paper. So it was invented to go that yes. way. Yeah. Okay, so which one is the right way, according to health experts? Over is the way to of go. Of course it is, yes. Health yeah. experts. Yeah, well, you're in the bathroom. Hey, we had to do, do something your this way. month. We had to come up with an article. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, would you guys rather wait to watch a movie on streaming or actually go to the theater for the experience? Uh, Vast majority streaming. Only if the theater experience is going to make it better like Top Gun or something like that. Uh, theater uh, back in the day, but, you know, 
now I, I don't go to the movies like I used to. Yeah, like I, I, three out of four times I'd rather watch it on the couch, but I think just getting out there to smell when you walk in, that nostalgia, mm-hmm. and there still is something about going to the theater. Now, you know. Sticky floor. Uh, the Meltdown guys, they wear oh, it out. They go all the time. Uh, now, I've gone more this year than I've gone in a lot of years. But I'd like to go about every three or four months. Anyway, we've got a new poll by Harris X, exclusive to IndieWire, found that 34% of U.S. adults prefer to watch movies in theaters, which means a solid two-thirds would rather wait for them to be released on streaming. Now, here are reasons people choose to wait for streaming. Cost of the movie ticket, 54%. Cost of concessions, 42%. Bring your own in. Distractions from other members of the audience, 19%. Inconvenient travel, 15%. Selection of films showing 13%. Inconvenient theater location is 13%. Limited availability on showtimes, 11%. And seat selection, 8%. Quality of movie has been the reason why I stopped going. Yeah. That, yeah. That's yeah it's just like too. you're not going to go see a rom com and spend 60 bucks. Like uh, you're just like, oh, I mean, like, Ooh, you have to see, there's I, be I would if it was like, good. Oh. If I knew it was good, I would go. I wouldn't mind it. Three it's, today. It's, yeah. the, uh, it's the ones that aren't good. You know yeah. what's better is the sound. The yeah. sound's better in the theater. That's oh, what bugs okay. me the most. thousand yep. percent is So I recently the watched Godfather 2. Yep. And uh, De Niro and Pacino, though, never shared on screen together. The only time they did 1995's Heat, just real quick, Michael Mann is doing a prequel and a sequel, and they both start filming this year. Oh, fantastic. Pre-heat. Pre-heat and, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Head over heat, right? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pumped, man. Uh, that is Trash, brought to you by Friends at Mortgage, right? Yeah. Uh, buying a house, major milestone in life. Getting it right comes under the right advice at the right time. That's why we're proud to partner with Mortgage Right. 205-815-9200 or mortgageright.com slash TNR. And our friends at Weight of Wellness, your journey to healthy living. We were just talking about some obesity numbers. Don't become one of those numbers. Get into shape in 2024 and let Leslie and her board-certified team jumpstart your weight loss right now. Just go to this website, a plan for me.com a uh, plan for me.com it is way to wellness your journey to healthy living no contracts no sign up fees and your first consultation is absolutely free it's way to wellness again that website a uh, plan for me.com a uh, plan for me.com everything next round is on demand now in the podcast section at nextroundlive.com Legacy Credit Union has the ultimate game changer for your finances. With Engage Checking, you can earn 3% APY on balances up to $15,000. You heard correctly, 3% APY. But it's not just about scoring with high yields. With Engage Checking, you can get paid up to two days early. That means your paycheck, Social Security, tax refund, you name it, you get it early. So stop sitting on the sidelines and get in the game with Engage Checking. Sign up today at LegacyCreditUnion.com or visit any nine Greater Birmingham area branches. APY is annual percentage yield. Terms and conditions may apply. See Credit Union for details. Federally insured by the NCUA. There are so many things I love about walk-ons. Authentic, mouth-watering Louisiana cuisine prepared fresh daily from scratch. A great beer selection and TVs everywhere to watch the big game every day of the week. And of course, they've got two great locations on Highway 280 and 119 and at Hoover near the Hoover Met. Walk-ons is also a great place for happy hour. Two to six Monday through Friday with $5 moonshine swirls, $5 house pours, and half-price appetizers. And it's an easy take-home experience for the family as well. Highway 280 and Hoover with walk-ons. Fire damage to your home or business is something you never want to consider. Ryan Brown here from the next round. But in the horrible event it happens, Dry Tech is here to help. They respond quickly and will reply to you within 20 minutes when you call 205-637-0143. They're working for you, the customer, not the insurance company. They've got five crews ready to go 24-7. Don't call the insurance company first. Call Dry Tech. Just remember this website, mydrytech.com. That is mydrytech.com. This hour of the next round is presented by the Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Now featuring seven days of giveaways with your chance to win a share of up to $125,000. The more you visit the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, the more chances you have to win. Take TNR on the go with a podcast built for your satisfaction. Miss Hour 1, find it in podcast form. Miss Hour 2, stream it now. Miss Hour 3, download it for later. Miss Hour 4, well, just know it's never coming back. Listen to TNR wherever you find podcasts. The wait is over. Tonali has arrived. Beautifully distinctive Italian styling and performance. Come test drive the all-new 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali plug-in hybrid at Alfa Romeo of Birmingham. The all-new Tonali offers best-in-class horsepower and torque. Fastest 0-60 to times in its class. Plus best-in-class range with full electric charge. 
And best of all, qualified Tenali leasees are eligible for up to $7,500 EV tax credit factored into your lease. Hurry down to Alfa Romeo of Birmingham and experience the all-new Tenali. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about my friends at Michelson Laser Vision, located conveniently UAB Highlands. Almost 20 years ago, I went in for the procedure. Only took 12 minutes for both eyes. When I went in, I had 2200 vision. I was legally blind. Now I have 2015 vision, still 19 years later. Make the call today. Schedule a hassle-free Free consultation, 969-8100. Dr. Mark Michelson, Dr. Jen Michelson, Michelson Laser Vision. Make sure you tell them the next round sent you, 969-8100 or michelsonlaservision.com. Last hour always brought to you by Champies Chicken Highway 119 in Alabaster. We tell you all the time it's great to go food as well, to take home and watch all the big games. The big question um, we were having coming back from Nashville was, was this Andy Kennedy's best coaching job this year? So let's ask the man if he thinks this was his best coaching job. So we're going to self-evaluate. Andy Kennedy is with us, the head coach of the UAB Blazers. (laughs) Look at that trophy. For those of you watching on video, when Scott goes full shot, you're going to see over his right shoulder the American tournament trophy with a net around the basketball. Congrats, AK. We were pulling so hard for you. I am thrilled that you won the championship, your team won the championship. Hey, thank you guys. Yeah, it was quite a weekend, huh? Yep. Um, uh, you know, it's one thing to, to be in in this new league, and this new league is, um, it's, it's been an educational experience to say the least. Uh, the platform of the new league and ESPN and the, the way in which you have viewership, uh, I think it's done tremendous things to help us to grow our brand. So, uh, we decided to crash the party right. Yeah. You know, I, I, I look at you three. I, I, I can imagine there's been a few parties crashed. I'm looking at you, LT, uh, in the past. I've, I've crashed a few and, and none better than uh, this weekend. Well, let me ask you this. Um, you know we love you, and you know we love having you on because you're fun. You cut up with us. You, I think you get that our show is not a normal show. He's as good of a broadcaster as he is a coach. That's right. He's I a mean, hell of a coach. You know how we feel about you. Yeah. I, I brought this up yesterday. I don't think I had ever seen you as personally down as the day you came on with us after that Rice loss. So I would ask in your honest moment, did you think what is now a possibility was a possibility coming out of that Rice game? You guys, I mean, I, I appreciate you guys too. I, I, I do. I think, uh, I think you guys have really got what we were trying to accomplish and what ultimately we did accomplish. We've got a good team. You know, everybody, everybody there has a role. There's synergy that comes with that. But I'm sure uh, over time that has gotten better. Think about our group. I brought in, you know, uh, two years ago, it was Jelly Mania. We were able to cut down the nets and get to the NCAA tournament. Uh, longest drought UAB had gone through, I think it was seven years in the illustrious history of this program. We were able to overcome that um, and, 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 and have success. School record, 27 wins. We brought back a talented group. We added to it. Came up a little short because of the, the darlings of last year's March Madness FAU. We're not to be denied. We don't win the championship game. We're relegated to the NIT, make a run there, and, and get to 29, a new record. This group that we brought back, I had four guys that had, that had, that had put on a UAB jersey before. We lost about 90% of our production, brought in nine new guys, four of which junior college, never been in Division I games. And we were sitting in, mid, uh, we were sitting in mid-December at four and five, having lost three in a row, two by double figures, Really, no identity, more questions than answers. But to the, our guys' credit, we continued to work. We continued to build. We started having some tangible success. So they started to believe, and ultimately, they established trust. I don't know. You know, it's not even really about me trusting me. It's about trusting one another. And that's where we got to. To your point, after the Rice game, I was really discouraged because I just didn't feel like after everything that we'd been through, I didn't feel like our approach was where it needed to be, and we ended up taking a humbling loss. But, again, to our guys' credit, and I know that every coach that's got a trophy and a net over his right shoulder would say this, oh, how proud they are of his of his team. But I don't know if I've ever been more proud of a group in my 17 years of doing this, um, of, of the growth of the group. And, and that's where that I was the most encouraged, uh, really proud of my guys. 
you know, as a, as a coach, you want to try to maximize what you have. And I think we've come close to doing that with this group. Okay, the good news is a double-digit seed is advanced to the Sweet 16 and 15 consecutive tournaments and 36 to 38 overall. But the bad news is you guys are playing the national runner-up in San Diego State. And if you were to beat the Aztecs, you probably get your SEC champion, Auburn Tigers. Not an incredible draw for you guys. I know you're happy to be in the tournament. But let's talk about the Aztecs first. What are you getting with San Diego State? Yeah, big respect for Brian Dutcher. He and I go back three decades, guys. He would, he would fit if I if you guys could scoot over. You know, I, I think I could segue in there as, as fourth on the dais, and I, and you guys don't know Dutch like I do. He would be a happy fifth, especially <laughs> on Fridays around two o'clock. We got to pull out that, that other thing that we got one of our title sponsors. Uh, so so he he's a great guy. I've known him for a long, long time. Unbelievable respect for the job and the way that they have built that program. Uh, they're a tremendous team. You know, I, I've said this almost every episode that I've been on with you guys. I'm a basketball Jones. I watch hoops. So, soups. So, I, uh, I've i seen San Diego State play. I watched that late TV slot of the Mountain West. Uh, nothing but respect for them. Physical team, talented team. We have to travel to Spokane, Washington, Pacific Coast time. They're accustomed to it. We tip at 1045 a.m. on Friday. So there's a lot of things that are coming at us that that uh, some would deem as challenging. Uh, but we're just happy to have the opportunity. First, I'll ask you, are you guys able are you all leaving today to try to get there and get your body clock going? Are you going today? No, we you know what uh, the NCAA and I, I know that I know this is going to shock you. <laughs> but they're not the most well-oiled machine. They are not. Uh, we're we're, we're going to leave tomorrow, and we still do not have a departure time. Oh my gosh! Uh, so so we're going to get out there tomorrow. Uh, you know, get a little acclimated. Have a have our practice time on Thursday, and give it the old good shot on Friday. Yeah, I when you describe his kind of teams, I saw him in Louisville last year when they beat Alabama. And, uh, you know, good offensively, but they really disrupted Alabama's uh, offense. They just took them out of their game. Is that sort of his M.O. as a coach? Is is it defense or is he an offensive-minded guy? No, it's defense first. They're, they're respectable offense. They've got a, a young man inside Lede who none of us would want to challenge in an arm wrestling contest. <laughs> he is a physical freak of nature, about 6'9", about 240. It's going to be a great matchup for my man Yaks, man. What a what an incredible story Yaks has been for us. Uh, and they're, they're going to be matched up a lot against one another. This kid's getting like 21-9. and nine. They run offense through him. He's a bull in a china shop. They are really, really physical defensively. They They are going to guard you. Um, you know, defensively, we'll do what we do. I, I bet they haven't seen somebody like us all year where we're going to change our looks uh, as much as we do to try to be disruptive. We've got to do a good job in the painted area, which has been our mantra. We've got to do a good job off our glass. We've got to get to the free throw line. We've got to be disruptive defensively. But to me, the key to the game is we have to score the basketball. We averaged 83 points per game, which is about five points higher than we got in the regular season in the AAC tournament. Our field goal percentage went up about four percentage points to a very respectable 49%. We were at about 39% from three. And we went through the entire tournament and only turned it over 20 times in three games. That is our formula to, to give us an opportunity to advance coach andy kennedy for a few more moments presented by legacy credit union the official credit union of the uab blazers he's on the johnston rv center.com hotline uh i i know you would have played this tournament anywhere they sent you but do you think it's cool i mean do you care that the state teams are all playing in spokane except for sanford who's going to salt lake city like when you saw that pop up did you like that let me tell you guys let me let me give you a little snapshot on how this transpired for me we play the 215 game that late window on e1 uh, right after the SEC championship game. So our, our game ended. It was actually a, a fairly quick game. Uh, our game ended, you know, 420-ish or so. Uh, they, 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 you know, they pulled out that stage. They dropped some confetti. They, they handed me this trophy, which is quite heavy. It's a good trophy. Um, they handed me that trophy. We took some pictures. We climbed up the ladder with the, with the scissors, which is something – we all, as kids, were told not to do, but damn, it's fun as an adult. <laughs> uh, we, we cut down those nets. I had to do post game radio. I got uh, our post game media. I got off post game media at about four fifty nine, 
They then rushed me up to a room. I walked in the room where the team was gathered, and I was not in the room 30 seconds uh, when our name popped up. As soon as I saw our name, I exited the room. We got our guys out of there. We got our belongings. We went back to the hotel. We got our bags, and we were at the airport flying home two hours later. Wow. Wow. So, so as of- well, I had no idea. I had no idea uh, if we won, it was Auburn. I had no idea Alabama was there until uh, I got to the airport and got on Twitter. Wow. Mm. Uh, a- as a fan of this tournament, I mean, there's something special, this buzz. Like, there's no work that gets done on this Thursday and Friday. Everybody's at the sports bar. We're all drinking. We're all watching. But as a guy that, that played in these games, that was an assistant coach and now a head coach, what is what is the feel like just that first weekend of being part of this? Oh, there's an incredible energy. You said it, LT. An incredible energy uh, that 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 comes along with this. And you know, sometimes it, it the thing that that I, I was praying for a couple of things. I was praying for a Sunday game, or excuse me, a, a Friday game because we obviously played Sunday, and we got that. And I was hoping uh, again that it would be. Uh, doable for our fans, and it's just going to be so difficult. I've never been to Spokane, believe it or not. I, uh, I'm friends with Mark Few. We're going to practice in their facility if I can get him to return my call. Um, <laughs> but and and uh, we're going to go out, and it, I don't know how big the arena is. Uh, I, I'm sure we'll have some diehard fans there. I think Auburn plays directly after us, so there'll be some fans. For Auburn, I'm sure make the trip as well as Alabama. So I'm a, I'm a little, you know, I wish it was closer because it would be more of an experience for, for all of our fan bases. But um, I can't wait to see our guys. Uh, this is a childhood dream for all the guys in my locker room, and they're they're approaching it with this childlike Christmas Eve mindset, and I think that's really cool. Uh, Stephen Pearl joins us every Tuesday. I am going to finish the interview the exact same way I finished it with him. Uh, We wish you all the best. We hope you go up there and win a couple of games, and we're talking to you about this tournament and your advancement again next week. Hey, guys, I appreciate you. We're going to continue to try to crash that party. Hey, hey, do it, do it. We're pulling for you. Thank you, Andy. Good that luck. Is, and that is a good looking trophy. Yeah, I'll a good trophy. You. I agree. It's a nice trophy. Yeah, especially yeah. with you. the net around it. Thank you. Take care. Andy Kennedy with us, courtesy of Legacy Credit Union. All right. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Andy and Steven on the uh, getaway show here. We'll be talking to some uh, Bama folks as we get closer uh, to, to tip time coming up on Thursday. Don't know exactly which player will uh, pop on with us yet, but we'll get somebody hopefully before we tip things off uh, on uh, Thursday and Friday at the different sites around the country. Don't forget my bookie bringing you the bracket challenge. Nextroundlive.com is the website. Nextroundlive.com is the website or any of the links right there. It's powered by my bookie. Also some great prizes and great food with our friends at Champies, championschicken.com. Thank you to Legacy who brings you Andy every day on the show. They uh, do a wonderful job there. Their swap and drop program continues right now. Swapandrop.com, swapandrop.com. All right, fun show today. We appreciate everybody being with us. Uh, tomorrow, uh, about 23 hours from now, we'll unveil the bracket punishments selected by our co workers individually for each of us. If we lose the brackets this year, that'll be in the 11 o'clock hour tomorrow. So uh, we look forward to learning those fates. Our brackets will be locked at 11 o'clock Central Time tomorrow. No changes after that. Enjoy a play-in that night. It's True TV Tuesday for the NCAA Tournament. Until next time, God bless you and God bless America.